Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Considering the Source. I'm your host, Scott Rowark. Well, it has been, honestly, way, way too long since we, uh, since we had an episode, and so my apologies for that. And so, uh, earlier here in this, in this calendar year of 2017, um, I decided, all right, it's time, we've got to go ahead and, and get this thing going again. Enough of sitting on my laurels, because I had received a lot of laurels. And so we put all that aside, and I finally said, all right, it's time to, we got to just schedule one of these and get this thing rolling again. And so when I'm trying to think who it is I'm going to schedule, there's only one person that came to mind, Jeff Henson, the man who knows about insulting people. It's, it's an art form for him. And so I gave him a phone call. We talked about it a, a couple of times, actually. And he said, yeah, I'm definitely down. And what we wanted to also do was do something a little bit different for this episode, and that is to invite a live studio audience. And it was a little harder than I think we expected uh, to get everyone here to the house on time. But we were able to get a, a number of, of people who would, and this is beyond like our moms and our dads and wives, we were able to get actual people here who wanted to actually sit in and listen to an episode of Considering the Source. And I, I personally liked it quite a bit to have them there to have like, to hear them laughing at the joke so you know immediately it's funny. Uh, that was good. And then at the very end of the, of the session, uh, we had uh, Jeff's friend Michael and Jeff's wife Becky. They actually came on and they told stories as well. And uh, it was pretty good. Now listen, um, as has been the case with Jeff in the past, if you're <laughs> if you're if you have little ones listening, um, you probably do want to turn that off at this point in time because sometimes the language gets uh, uh, a little bit more adult by Jeff and myself as well. So be aware of that. And if you're a real cat lover, there's probably some sections of this that you're going to want to uh, to avoid. So so uh, be aware of that. Now if now this episode is we sat down for two straight hours and um, I, I didn't edit really anything out. So there's going to be some breaks in there, not long breaks, but um, breaks and uh, lulls in the conversation. But um, if you'd want to see exactly to go in the two hours to a specific spot in the recording, uh, don't hesitate to go to our website. And I basically I'll, I'll basically post everything about as far as the topics are concerned, exactly when we hit those topics. So if you just want to go ahead and fast forward to those sections, you can do that. So uh, without any further ado, uh, ladies and gentlemen, here is our here is our session with our good buddy, Jeff Henson and friends. Since we last talked, you know, it's been a year. Yeah, it's been over a year since you yeah. and I and, and Joshi were here. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. How's he doing? All right, I guess. He's not, I don't work with him anymore. He's got a new job. He's married. He's, but I figured you'd uh, still be calling him. And yeah, sometimes, whatever. I mean, uh, you know, every, every so often. But uh, you ever just you know. show up at his house and scare him or make fun of him? No, I'd like to. I'd love to, but uh, I, I need to. Uh, uh, I need to do that. We keep one of those things we keep talking about. How we want to get together soon, but just haven't for a long time. You know. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's, he's married. He's you know newlywed. He's probably you know. Banging the wife and every yeah. house, is, every room of the house, and everything. So mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Yeah. You, uh, you remember how it was before kids? Yes, I do. Yep. yep. Every room. Yep. yep. Sorry, babe. So uh, to the listeners, uh, we do have a live studio audience here. Say uh, hi, studio audience. Say hi, everybody. Hi. Woo! All right, oh, there man. are at least twenty thousand people uh, here. Something like that. Calm yep. down, everybody. <laughs> Calm down. It's just considering the source. Um, so if you hear a dog barking or children uh, crying or screaming, that's that's what's going on. So um, so I, again, I said it's been a year since we were last here, and iconic photography has really uh, expanded. Uh-oh. Am I wrong? Oh, we're expand absolutely. We're in every state. Uh, we're every every continent. We're uh, we've got uh, offices all over the world. And um, we're ready to serve your uh, wall needs of uh, mm. pictures. So um, this is all good. Yeah. The, the pictures are the pictures really are fantastic. Thank you. They really are. Okay. And if you're listening today, we'll be putting some of those on the site if Jeff will allow it. Oh sure, absolutely. Yeah, I'll I'll talk to my lawyers and we'll we'll probably right. get that worked out. Yeah. But we need to talk about this breaking and entering. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, so you, recently you've been on Facebook, and yeah. there you are in someone else's home, uh-huh. creepy homes, yeah. and just taking pictures. What's going on here? Well, yeah. Well, you make it sound like the people are home. They're I not home. I make sure they're not home first. 
But you hate thieves. You know? Yeah, yeah I, I do. I, I, I can't. I can't. I, I don't. The the breaking I, an in ring is fine. The only thing I take is pictures. So, you mm. know, I mean, I, I don't I don't steal anything. Right. What, so, what, I mean, what prompted you to do this? Uh, I don't I I like abandoned places. It's uh, it's fascinating to me, you know, seeing how the, uh, um, you know, uh, the, the, there, there's a whole mystery behind it. There's a, there's a story there, just like, you know, like you like the stories. And, and uh, there's a reason that uh, these places, something happened. And, and it's kind of fun to kind of try to piece it together. You know, like this one, the last one I went into, it had uh, the, the, I, I was guessing around 30 years. It was more like about 20 because I, I found a calendar. It was like 1994 in there. Empty for 20 years. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was uh, just dust an inch thick all over the place. And, and But the thing was, was there's still uh, a lot of personal belongings in there. There was, uh, you know, literal pictures on, on the walls of, and not just like pretty pictures, like family member pictures, you mm-hmm. know, and and things in and, and uh, there was in the it was like in kind of an older farmhouse and there was in the front living room there was like a, a bed frame and uh, like somebody had been sick staying there you know and then you go upstairs and then there's there's somebody was very into painting there was a lot of painting going on and a lot of uh, and, there's a, and there's a cigarette still the, burning right yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah <There's, coughs> so then. So there's a lot of stuff on the floor. There was a uh, like a fif- bunch of 50th anniversary party favors mm-hmm. and things. So it, it tells me, you know, it was like an older couple. And, uh, I, I'm, you know, and there was like a, a, a wedding cake topper that was... Uh, Mike, can you get her? That, <laughs> that all these people are... Yeah. So, uh, to, to my so anyway. to listeners, we're, we apologize for yeah. these people just laughing. Uh, well, you know, we got 20,000 20, people. It's hard to keep them all yeah. quiet. But They're having their own conversation over here. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt your conversation <laughs> with our podcast. All right. So uh, I found a, a, a wedding cake topper that was that was there that I, you know, I, I guess, you know, would just assume it was the original wedding cake topper. And that was kind of neat. And, you know, I took a picture of that in front of the dilapidated windows and everything. And it looked kind of cool you know with the rain outside pouring down on it and all this stuff and but uh so yeah i mean yeah it's definitely uh you know creepy somewhat i mean uh, the the one closet was you just open it up and it was just raccoon shit all in the floor Mm -hmm. i mean it was just i mean and how did you know that it was raccoon shit well i uh, god i I figured it wasn't tiger shit uh or elephant because it was from the ceiling so it was either Uh. you know Squ- maybe squirrel. Maybe squirrel. I'm not. I'm not. Maybe possum. Maybe. Maybe I'm mm. not uh, totally Fox. up on the. I, I don't think. F- f- are foxes going to be up in three story houses? I don't, yeah. Maybe I don't know. Mm. But like this house, I didn't. I didn't break anything. I just entered, so it'd be just right. kind of entering, I guess, because the, the the back door was open, and I just walked right in. So how did you not like pick a, this house? Uh, well, twenty years ago, I killed the people. <laughs> nice, and then. I just, uh, you know, waited. Yeah, yeah. You know? uh, That's a serial killer trait. It I, is. I kind of want to is. go back. It's, it's a, it took me a long time to build up that patience. Yeah. To let that happen. But I was driving by uh, somebody more out in the country. I was actually delivering another print to somebody for Christmas. And I, I saw this house and it looked like uh, it was all overgrown with weeds and vines and everything. And, and uh, you know, it looked like really creepy monster house or whatever. And, and I just kind of remembered where it was at and then i went back and uh you know got out looked and uh you know you could tell nobody was living there i mean the front uh, the front door was just covered with vines and there was like a big swing set in front of it or whatever that was all knocked over yeah like nobody had ever been in there and then so you know i suddenly go to the house and i on the side door and i knock on it and you know, you kind of, hey, hello, hello, you know, one of those things. And, uh, and are you, you know, a you, weapon or anything? No, no, just, uh, just, just, I don't know, just my fists. Yeah. You know, look, I mean, yeah. Come on. And, uh, you know, you, cause I know that there's a lot of squatters. Like my, my buddy does, uh, uh, as, asbestos work. Okay. Uh, where, where he goes and, and checks old abandoned places for asbestos and things. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's told me multiple times about how 
there's squatters there, like homeless people living in places mm-hmm. like that, you know, and mm-hmm. some of them are, are mentally ill and they'll, you know, very, get, can get very violent and, sure. and that type of stuff. Yep. So, uh, you know, so I always, you know, anytime I've gone into these places, you know, I kind of like yell and scream, make sure, hey, hello, you know, make sure nobody's there or whatever the case may be. And um, so, you know, you kind of got to slowly, you know, start going through there. And I mean, not only that, you got to watch out for, like we said, like raccoons or animals or whatever in there. I mean, you really never know. Like this place, I mean, I went down into the basement. It was like a like a dirt floor basement. I mean, this was like an old farmhouse type of thing. And, and uh, I mean, anything. And you're thinking have... Blair Witch. Bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, there it was one of those things where it was a, uh, the the furnace that was in there was, God, I don't know, that, that furnace had to be original. It was like probably like 80 years old. You know, I mean, it was this giant, you wouldn't, like, you wouldn't have been able to get it through the door. Like, they put that down there first and then built the house wow. around it. Yeah. So, is this the house that you um, went to a second time later and you said that, like, you could tell that something had changed? Yeah, had yeah. been there. I went, I went there a second time. The first time I just went there just to check it out and just to, just to see what the, what the story was. And then uh, I went back a second time and that was, like, How th- long? Two, two, three weeks or so. And there was absolutely, there was, I mean, major something moved. Something, they, they took a, the, uh, uh, like some sort of a cabinet out of there. Somebody did, and they moved a bunch of stuff just in the kitchen, and everything else was kind of the same. But they also took out, I noticed, because uh, I, I, I only shot a few pictures the first time, and they took out a, uh, a, a ceiling light from the living room. It was kind of kind of a neat looking gothic type of thing or whatever. But so I'm, I'm guessing it was just somebody like me who just noticed that it was an old house and, you know. Stole started, it. Yeah, started scrounging through. Maybe it Led for, Zeppelin. Maybe. They, you never know. I mean, uh, hey. What? <laughs> Robert, Robert Plants and Love, know, Dire Straits. Yeah, yeah. Love. Uh, Mike's awesome. Your friends. Mm-hmm. Chatty Cathy over here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Do you guys remember Chatty Cathy? You ever heard of Chatty Cathy? Anyone <laughs> in the room? You? Yeah. All right. Do you remember Chatty Cathy? Yeah, I remember. What yeah. was Chatty Cathy? It was a doll. It was to, a to doll. Talk. Do you remember Talking Tina? No. It's from Twilight Zone. Mm. I'm Talking Tina, and I'm going to kill you. Remember that? Is that like that, that predated Chucky? Oh yeah, yeah, mm. hell yeah! Wow. Yeah, there's uh, so Twilight Chucky Zone. Every, a, Chucky was a thief too. There's so many things that are ripoffs of the Twilight Zone. It's not even funny, dude. Yeah. Yes. What's absolutely. your favorite Twilight Zone story? Uh, uh my favorite Twilight Zone. The, the what? Cornfield. No, not the cornfield. Cornfield. Uh, the kid who the monster turned the kids and uh, could turn people into send them out in the cornfield and turn them into monsters. He turned them into Jack in the Box. It was Bill Moomy. He was nine years old when he played. I, I I met him. That was so cool. Really? Yeah. But anyway, but that's but not your favorite. My, that's not my favorite. My favorite is the Absolute Man with uh, Burgess Meredith. Okay. And uh, long story short, it's about a future society where you know your your free speech is stifled and blah blah blah. And uh, the guy's a librarian. So that they, they don't have any need for night librarians anymore because they banned all the books. And so they're going to kill him. So they get, he gets to... Uh, so this is predicting yeah. the Trump administration. Uh, they were... They were, they were we're they done see now. the future. We're done. That's Go ahead. It. I'm yeah. sorry. No, this is what would have happened if Hillary got it. <laughs> and uh, so then... Uh, so yeah, so then the twist is, uh, you know, he gets to perform... He gets to choose how he wants to be executed. And then the twist is that he has the guy come... The, 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 the chancellor of the state comes and, and stays with him and, and uh, he locks him in the room with him and he makes him beg to get out. And it's, yeah, it's a, it's a whole thing. So I don't want to ruin it for, you know, a oh, uh, no. 50 year old spoiler alert or anything, but uh, you know, so you got to see it on your own. My favorite one was, I can't remember when exactly they brought the show back, but I was guessing it was probably in the nineties, maybe late eighties. I can't tell you when, but I remember this two one. different times they did in okay. the eighties and the nineties. Okay. Well, there was this one story where this uh, guy wakes up in his house and everyone is gone. And he's looking around, where is everybody? Where is everybody? And so he goes outside and shortly, here comes these, all these trucks. These trucks come barreling through the town. And he goes up to him and they're like, oh, no, oh, we got one, we got one. And what it is is, basically, they're five minutes ahead of us. And they're going through your house and making sure everything is right where it needs to be. All right? And every time, you you know, when you left your watch over here 
and then you go back and like, where, where, where did I put that? That's because they've dropped the ball and they didn't put it exactly where it was five minutes from now. And so what they'll commonly do is then they'll, they'll catch it and then 10 minutes later, they'll put it in its spot. And somehow this guy had fallen through the cracks and he's in between. Who's they? I don't know who they were. No. It doesn't matter who they were. Uh, okay. You're the only person who knows any other Twilight Zones other okay, than the so, first ones. Go right. ahead. So listen, if there's anybody that knows that story and remembers that, I got your back. You're losing listeners now. Continue. I never had <laughs> listeners. Okay. That just presumes that okay. they were here. So, um, so you've broken into this house twice. Yes. And what other kind of well, spots have you gone into? And do you have your eye on some other places? Are you casing some other joints that you're going to go I to? I absolutely am. As, as right. a matter of fact, on the way over here, I saw this place in Brunswick that was way back, kind of back in the woods, uh, kind of by, uh, on, on Pearl Road. And uh, it's... Police it, station? No, 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 not the police station. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, yeah. My, my wife gets gets really upset with me anymore because, you know, when we're driving around, I'll just be like scouting for like abandoned places and everything. But uh, hey, look, look, we're doing the podcast over here. I'm sorry, everybody. We're, we're getting distracted here. But anyway, yeah, there's some other there's some other places. I, there's this place in, in Medina that I saw and I, I stopped it. I wanted to stop for so long and I did stop finally. And then I, I took one step onto the porch and it almost I almost sunk right in. So I said, okay, F that. I'm not, I'm not going in right. anymore. You know, so some of these places you like, you can't even get in because it's just, you would literally die. You know, you just fall through the floor. Yeah. So since, since we last talked, have you, um, upgraded your camera? Um, in the last year? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. Is this the one you've always been wanting? No, I, there's not necessarily one I've always been wanting. So the, 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 what do you got? What are you working with today? What uh, is that? It's a Canon ADD. Ooh, yeah. It's, it's, it's not like it's a, yeah, I, I don't know, I no whatever. Idea. But it, it was, yeah. Uh, the ADD. The, yeah, the, the only yeah. reason I did was because uh, we, we, I took it on vacation to Myrtle Beach, and I was doing some beach shots, and I, it got hit by a wave. So, uh, yeah, that, that, uh, that toasted that. So Is this one of those that it's digital and regular film? No, it's it's all digital. It's straight digital. Yeah. Is anyone using film anymore? Some people do. Yeah, yeah. Old old timers or some people go for certain type of looks or whatever. But Peter, uh, Peter Lick, he uh, <laughs> yeah yeah okay Beavis. All right, uh, Peter Like, I think oh, okay. maybe we'll call him. Uh, he's I don't know, probably the world's most famous photographer. He's got uh, studios in like Vegas and stuff, and his his prints sell for like hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah anyway he uh he does some print work so some? yeah yeah huh. but it's kind of a, it's becoming a lost art you know like the whole uh dark room and chemicals and all that stuff yeah but, I, I mean are you gonna get a better quality picture that way versus digital no you're just gonna get a different looking picture you could you know you might be able to do a few different things or you know, whatever. Who has time for that? Some people have, you know, some people are just old school, you know, like some people like uh, vinyl albums instead of CDs, you know, the, some people can't tell a difference, but, you know, between them, some people can, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Those, people, those people are liars. Yeah. There's no difference. Um, all right. So I, I catch all this stuff when you're doing this on Facebook mm-hmm. because this is where I, I, I love to watch you work. Oh. This well. is, you're, you're an artist. Okay. You With find what? ways to offend people. That okay. like like you're a revolutionary. Wow, thanks. The, like you, like Picasso was with paint. Okay, that's you with offending people on Facebook. Wow, you well, know I'm I kidding. like that. Uh, you can know I use that quote? So so you invited me. So yesterday I'm on Facebook and I get this invitation from him to join. Uh, what what's what's this? What's the name of this site? Medina politically debates it. Okay, yeah. M- M- Medina politically debates it. Yeah. And so I'm I'm looking at this site. And like their sponsors or the, the page sponsors or whatever are basically saying, we want this to be a place where everybody's friendly and respectful. Sure. And, and it's just, it's, it's so, so not that <laughs> it's, it's actually, it's just Facebook here. Like they've yeah. done, there's no difference in that little room right. than there is outside on the regular Facebook. Yeah. If it's you... just that people are coming there intentionally just to bash each other. Yeah. Like, has anybody been kicked off of this page? Uh, I don't know. I think so. I, I, yeah. But you're still on. I'm still on. Two days or three days now you've been on there? No, quite a, I've been on quite a while. But and you just yeah. invited me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. 
You know, I've been, uh, I've, if you notice, I've been kind of tame with it uh, on my own page a lot because I've been arguing so much with these dumbasses on this other page that I only have time. I don't have time for my friend dumbasses. I only have time for, right. you know, this page dumbasses. Right. And it, you know. This is my really important question. It's go- you're going to think I'm being sarcastic, but I'm telling you right now I'm not. Okay. All right. So have you ever, in all this arguing and debating, mm-hmm. have you ever been able to convict or convince someone and their view has changed? That's a great question. Probably not. Because they're idiots. Yeah, absolutely. Look, And, and, and I'll, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you the truth. I, I have to, in a certain sense, include myself in that yeah. stupidity. Yeah. I, I am sold out to my beliefs. Mm-hmm. And I, I can acknowledge that I do filter things. So, for instance... Somebody says, somebody asked me the other day, um, I would love to know if, if any of the Trump supporters, if you, if you would just tell me, um, if you're okay with Trump accepting money for the prime minister of Japan to stay at his property. And so my response was, I said, it probably robs me as wrong as much as when the Clintons did it. And uh, he's like, well, no, no, I'm talking about a sitting president. I'm like, oh, okay. Because I don't see a big difference between Secretary of State and sitting president. Sure. But if that's, how, that, if that's what you have to do to sleep at night, okay. Right. And what was I saying? What was I even I, saying? Here? I don't know. I don't know. You have your own point of view. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. So, <laughs> when, when, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That brought it all you're, back. You're, I wish, I wish my listeners change. were here with me. Yeah. Uh, because Becky uh, was able to – it was Becky, right? Becky was able to walk me right through exactly what I was thinking. Okay. Um, I, I filter all that through. Yeah. And like my first thing I thought is like, mm, I don't know how accurate that is. I don't even know where you're getting this information, but I'll go along with it. Yeah. So, so you have yet to ever actually convince anybody of. of well, th- that's a th- well, see. This is a thing. This is how I like to look at it. Is is if I do convince anybody, I, I'm such an asshole on there. I mean. I know that nobody's going to say, wow, Jeff, that was a very insightful uh, piece of literature you just wrote. And, you know, I'm, I, it really changed my life. Yeah. Uh, I, I prefer to come to the, 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 the point of view of I know that there's a lot of people that, that are just voyeurs that just look and, and just read and, and don't interact at all on Facebook. They just like to read it and, and look at it. And, you know, I like to th- think in my own warped way that I, that maybe I'm making people think who are on the fence about okay. uh, seeing it in, in, you know, in a different type of point of view. Okay. How about that? I, I'm, I'm fine with that. All right. Um, my thing with Facebook over the past, I don't know, maybe the past year has been, I don't know why everybody keeps writing stuff because as I said on Facebook, um, at, at, like we don't need to go. So let's just say it was April. We don't need to go to November. We all know exactly sure. right now who we're going to vote. And if for. you didn't, you're an idiot. Yes. Yeah. That's why, like at one of those, at one of the, at one of the debates, when like these are our undecided, where the hell have yeah. these five or eight people been? Well, did you see that those people? Un- like yes. Ken Bone, dude. He yeah. obviously lived in his parents' basement. It's, He's playing Xbox all day long or whatever, or yeah. just yeah. jacking off to you know Sears catalogs down yes. there. Yes, and we went there. Yes. Yeah. So Whatever. I can't I can't believe though that there are there are genuinely people who are undecided on these two people. Right. Like how can you not actually actually I could I could see like you could I could see somebody hating them both. Sure. Loving one or hating them both, but I can't see any undecision on either of those. Yeah. Well, I I I, I agree. I don't know what I'm going to say. No. Oh, okay. I'm just wanting to rile you up. No, I <laughs> Well, uh, what riles me up is, um, you know, these people who get on there and, you know, yeah, everybody has an opinion. Hey, that's great. You know, but then, you know, the, the thing that gets me is, is the, the liberal people who will say, oh, well, you know, we, we just need to love each other. We need to be tolerant. We need to do this. We need to do that. And then I got this friend on Facebook. Well, I say that, too. Yeah. Well, I got this friend on Facebook then who has this, who has this friend that I always get into it with. You do. And and, you know, she's. Uh, like, uh, Oh, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. And 
kill Trump. I hope his family effing dies. And it's like, well, okay, well, okay. Do you think Jesus would like that? I don't know. What what do you think? I don't know. I mean, as as much as I hate Clinton, I think she's a crooked, lying, conniving bitch, whatever. That's whatever. I would never, ever wish ill on Chelsea. I I don't, you know, I I feel bad for Chelsea. That's her mom. I mean, that's that's the worst I'm going to say. I mean, I'm sure Chelsea's a fine person, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I would never, ever wish ill on on that. And and that's what I see so much of, especially now with coming from the left, is not only not only is it, oh, I hate Trump. Oh, I hate his kids. I hate his Mm -hmm. his housekeeper. I hate everybody that I hate every worker that's ever worked for him. It's like I, I, you know, this love trumping hate. I mean, it just uh, it it, it's the it seems to have entailed a lot more arson than I thought and right. hatred, you know. Um, I can recall when Michelle Obama came out at a Hillary support campaign uh, event and said, when they go low, we go high. Yeah. And that was the last I heard or saw that happen. Or Yeah, sure. Because as soon as he was elected, mm-hmm. it's been um, just riots and protests and uh, what was your thought yesterday with the uh, DeVos thing? Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah, now you're going to get me riled up. Is what, it, uh, yeah, that's so what it is. What, what's your thought on this? Well, this, this whole DeVos thing is, is, you know, everybody's saying, oh, my gosh, he's the most unqualified person ever. To, to uh, Maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Wh- whatever. Maybe. And, and that, that's fine. Bitch about it. Have your, your, your say. Get all riled up and everything. It was ma- mainly just teachers who, you know, just – so I'm, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a fan of teacher unions. So, uh, I, I think it was a lot of teacher unions, you know, like really getting up in arms about this stuff because she wants to, from what I'm aware of, you know, she wants to privatize a lot of this stuff and, and charter schools and mm-hmm. all this stuff. So that creates competition for public schools. And then, and then they're going to have to start trying to divvy for some of this, for some more money. And to me, I'm a capitalist guy. I mean, at any time, it, any competition is good competition, and it's going to create a, a better end product. And, um, you know, so then, you know, they're saying, oh, my gosh, she's the worst. She's the worst. And then she finally gets confirmed, and then she goes there, and then they say, oh, you we're not letting you into school. Right. They physically blocked her from going into school. Well, you know, okay, yeah, you're so terrible at your job. You're so terrible at your job. Well, let me try to learn this job. No. You're, we're just going to block you from going in. Right. It, uh, that's, the, you know, the love and tolerance again of, uh, you know, the, the left and the unions and, and all that stuff. So I was watching one of the news channels, something fair and balanced, and uh, they said <laughs> that they're in um, that they're in, in that was in Washington. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. And the reporter, who is probably lying, stated that in Washington, the percentage of students passing math, 12%. Okay. And that takes me back to when Donald Trump said to the African-American community, what have you got to lose? Sure. Sure. What the hell have you got to right. lose? All right? And so if you're going to look at her and go, she's not qualified, okay. Well, uh, apparently, How's it been those who for the were last... qualified exactly. have got it to this point. So what's twelve? Yeah. Let's dro- let's just drop twelve percent, and they all fail math. Okay, exactly. then then then, then then we can say you're right. All right? right, but this is this is this is nonsense, and it, it obviously hasn't worked so far. So let's try something different. No. So I mean, and the thing that's frustrating me the most right now is that there is no one stepping forward and making logical point by point. Um, arguments against the things that he is saying my friend on facebook the other day mm-hmm. what the issue there was because of the way in which he says things right the quote-unquote bull in a china shop right and that's why people can't get behind him and that's why people protest is what is being said and meanwhile i have the video of barack obama saying the same, the same thing, thing about immigration i'm not now i'm not talking about this current ban I'm talking about him stating that we need to stop. We have to limit the amount of immigrants that are coming in here. Um, what it comes down to, what frustrates me, is that it is no longer about what he is saying. It is truly no longer about even how he says it. It is who is who, saying it. Yep, absolutely. I will oppose everything that he says. And this is the kind of thing that frustrates me, and it frustrates me 
even if Hillary had gotten in, listen, if Hillary had gotten in, yes, I would have cried, but I would have gotten over it. All right. All right. And I, and I, I wasn't, I wasn't going to protest. I'm not going to go down there and stop her from getting to work or anybody she nominates. Um, I never would have done these things. I'm not just going to try to be belligerent just to be belligerent. And nobody would have done these things. I, 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 and, you know, you could say that, well, you don't know that, Jeff. Well, no, I do that. know that because uh, eight years ago it didn't happen and four years ago it didn't happen. I wanted Romney in so bad. Mm. And nope. What, was there one violent protest? Was there one protest? Yeah. Anything about, about that? Nope, not yeah. at all. But, you know, the, the little snowflakes don't get their way, so they have to go and they, they throw chairs through Starbucks just to, what, for, I don't know, whatever reason, I don't know, right. just to prove a point. Another thing that's really uh, disconcerting is at the, uh, at the college campuses, there is a great amount of um, intolerance for free speech. Mm -hmm. So when Milo, when he decides he's going to go out there to Berkeley, um, is everyone here familiar with Milo? Okay, when he's going to go out there, so I'm, I'm I have my my fox and my fox and friends here. So when Milo he's, yeah, I'm this. yeah, that that yeah. guy. So when he's going to head out there, mm -hmm. they're going to protest. And so again, I'm watching Fair and Balanced right. last night. Sure. And uh, there, and so they had this guy who was uh, not Berkeley, but he was a graduate student at another university that had also opposed it. And um, they're basically simply saying there's n you're, there's some things you're not allowed to come here and say. And they and they they stand in judgment of you mm -hmm. and your perspective and and, and, and uh, your beliefs and no that is hate or that is this or that and that's just, not allowed just, here. It is. It's it's because they don't they don't agree with that. So that and that's bad. And just because you have some sort of different point of view, oh, you're automatically a racist. So then that you know and then racial free speech. You know you, you can't have you know any anything. Uh, free speech has to do with that. that. That's what people don't understand. Free speech is is encapsulate all free speech. Yeah. You know, I, everybody I know thinks the Westboro Baptist Church is a bunch of assholes. Yes, but, but they still have a right to free speech. They sure do. And you know, it, it, yeah, and and you know, we have a right to block them different ways or whatever. Like, uh, you know, they the bikers form those loud right things or whatever, but legal ways. And uh, yeah. You, Free speech is for everybody. It's not just uh, not just for the snowflakes who don't like uh, what you're trying to say. Correct. So, go ahead. Was there a noise just then? Burn. It's Keurig. the Keurig. Keurig. You just had to have that coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't do a podcast anymore. Right. I know. I hear. You. Wait, I, I, I gotta ask this guy. Are you? Are you? He's like, Mexican. Are you? Are you? You're Mexican. I am Mexican. Oh my yeah. god. I'm here legally. Can we build a wall? <laughs> He's here can we build a wall here or something? Are, yeah, are can you, you? Can you pay for it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tax you for it though. Uh, are you liberal or conservative or both or? Pretty conservative. Oh, okay, cool. Oh God, yes. All right. I, I don't know. I didn't want to, you know, piss off a guy he doesn't met. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. Especially. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, dude. I, let me just say, I, I love tacos. All right. All right. Good. Well, that's fantastic. Right, awesome. um, how about we go live? Okay. All right. What, why? You really want to go live? Why not? All right. I Just for a moment. Okay. okay. All right. So give me one second here. Describe your live video. Considering the source live. Let's try this. What is so funny, everybody? <laughs> hmm? All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, it's me, Scott Roark. We're here live with my buddy, Jeff Henson. Really? <laughs> I, I did not see that coming. I didn't know that he was, he was going to do that. Um, I wish that he had talked to me about that. Uh, this is saying the connection is weak. How's your Wi-Fi? Well, I don't know, but it's saying the connection is weak. So, um, let's see if people start showing up. One person is here already. Uh, you, would you guys like to see our live studio audience? They're right here, uh, right here in the in the row arc uh, living room. We have all of our uh, fantastic live studio audience. Some of them are. Jerks. 
Uh, All right, now Jeff is listening to the. Oh, oh, Jeff Henson has joined the the Facebook Live session. That's good. So, um, as you guys know, we've we've been doing this for about forty five minutes now. We've we've had some really good conversation about uh, Jeff. Hey, Josh Lovett is on here. Oh, Josh! I'm gonna call Josh. Josh, we were talking about you just a few minutes ago, man. Um, If you're okay with it, like tech, we might call you, Josh. We might call you. but we we've been talking here a little bit about um, iconic photography and how that's going for 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 uh, for Jeff, yeah, uh, Spider Man, and uh, we've also been talking hey, a man. little bit. Now hold on, let me mute his mic. We're on. Uh... So he's actually now on the phone with uh, with Josh. Oh my god! Oh, I, just get his phone number and I'll call him. All right. So um, I'm sorry. This is this is. This is live. This is live. This is what happens when you're live. Um, we were talking about iconic photography and how that's really grown up and um, also about him uh, breaking and entering as he's going into some of these abandoned homes uh, and taking a lot of crazy, crazy pictures. And they're really, really good. So if you guys haven't looked at iconic photography, I highly recommend that you do that. Um, it's good stuff. Iconic photographer. Iconic photographer. Yeah. .com. So anyway, um, what we'd like to do is give you the opportunity right now, because a little bit later tonight, we're going to be recording um, some stories based upon the random words that you give us. So right now, uh, any random noun or verb, just give us any random noun or verb, and we're going to go ahead and, and a little bit later, we'll write it down, and a little bit later, we will um, tell stories about those, whatever. It's really like a psychological thing. Like the first story that comes to your mind, we'll tell those stories. And no one's writing anything. No. There's there's two people, and Josh is one of them. Come on. It, it took him five minutes to type in was up. <laughs> so I don't know how how successful. Feet. All right. Would you write down sure, feet man. there for, uh, I think, I mean, who knows what word he really meant to write. He may have meant to write something else. Uh, but he wrote down feet. Uh, Jason Broca, my buddy from so long ago. Jason, any word from you? Give me a noun or a verb, please. I'm begging you. We're down to one person. It's probably just Josh. It's probably just Josh. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, everybody. Uh, no, it was feet, Josh said. He wanted us to know that it really was the word feet. Okay. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we're gonna, uh, I'm going to go back. We're going to talk a little bit more to my buddy, Jeff Henson. Jeff, say hi. Hi. So we're going to talk... <laughs> We're going to talk a little bit more about uh, him, and then we're going to give our buddy Josh, uh, Josh Lovett a phone call because apparently he has a story. So it should be, it should be a good one. So um, I'll see you guys soon, all right? Have a good night. All right. Wasn't that fun? That was great. Thank you, everybody. Whew. Thank all you. Right. All right. Good. All right. Yeah, sure. Let me post yeah. that. And should we call Josh now? Sure. Let's call Whatever. Josh right now. This right. very moment. Hey, you're going to be able to like to get him through on the whole thing and yeah. Oh my god, that's so You cool, guys dude. unfortunately are not going to be able to hear him. So, oh. All right. So, let me just go ahead and put this number out for the world. <laughs> so everybody can call Josh. <laughs> all right. It is going to be a good time here. 706. All right. It's early. Oh, all right. So it's ringing. It's ringing. Oh, my God. He's going to see my number, and he's not going to know who it is. And hopefully I have the right number. This is Josh. This so, is there you Josh. Go. Yeah. Well, there he is. What's up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> well, so Josh, we were talking a little bit earlier about it's been a year since we've been here. Are you still there, Josh? Right. <laughs> Hello? Hello? I'm still here. Your signal's terrible. My signal's terrible. Okay, well. Um, I'm still here. All right. Where are you right now? In my house. Okay. So, um, so what are you wearing? Steve, asked, or, I'm sorry, uh, Jeff asked that, not me. Uh, I'm in dress clothes. Oh, oh that's wh- hot. Why? Why are you in dress clothes? Lindsay and I went to a Valentine's banquet. Oh, oh really? Man. 
So now you've come home. You guys are both all yes, dressed sir. up, liquored up. You're going to get down to business? You know it, man. Yeah, the whole buddy. nine yards. Okay, oh. I got a story. Start For making real. those it's ginger babies. Story. All right, so what's the story? I got robbed on Wednesday. You got robbed? Okay, tell me about it. What happened? <laughs> I got robbed, man. How? Where? Okay, so I was at work. Was Led Zeppelin was in the vicinity? Work. I work in... Go ahead. No. Josh, do you no, know who Led Zeppelin Josh, 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 Josh. Dude, you're going to confuse him. Do you man. know who Led Zeppelin you gotta get is? Him, you got to keep him on a, on, a, on a path. Josh, do you know who Led Zeppelin is? Uh, I know he's a singer. You know he's a singer. <laughs> he's a singer. <laughs> can, you name yeah. any, can you name any of his songs? Led Zeppelin? Uh, doesn't, doesn't he sing like, uh, oh, what's that one song? Hold on. Don't Google oh, it, Joe. I have one song. I, I, I can, like, I can't think of the tune. Yeah. Oh, what is it? Another One Bites the Dust? Funky Cole Medina? Yeah. Yeah? No, that's not it. Uh. He, like, has a really, really high-pitched voice in the song and everything. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, all right. Let's go back to your you getting robbed. Let's hear about this. You said you were at work? <coughs> I was at work. I work in in Akron. All right. And my boss was leaving work early, and he goes outside, and here's this stupid person with a railroad-tied rock busting out the window to my Mini Cooper. So he runs back inside, yells for me, says, Josh, someone's breaking in your car. So I panic. I start running outside. Well, we see the two guys. Now there's two of them. I look in the car, we start going after them. Oh, there were two of them. They were it was teamwork, man. Mm. So then were they, they go, were they white or black? I run to my car to see what had happened, what they had taken. What race, sudden, Josh, in, Josh, 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 this is important. Yeah. What race were they? Oh, they were black. Why do you say black? it like that? Like he's like, Oh, they were black. They yeah. were black. Like, were they black and Mexican? <laughs> no, they were just black. They were straight up black. All right. Straight up black, like 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 LL Cool J black or like Denzel Washington black. More like Denzel Washington okay, black. Okay, like mm. wow, mm. like dark as night uh, black. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, All right. That's my Denzel. Black. Uh, oh, that's good. You like that? Were they wearing Hillary shirts? No, no they okay. were wearing Bernie Sanders shirts. Bernie Sanders shirts. Mm. Okay. Well, right, you can't blame them. They were just getting what sure. was theirs. All right. So, so what did they get out of your car? Did they take all your country CDs? I, I have a CC... No, I have a CCW. So they stole my gun out of my console and they stole my wallet. They stole your gun. Okay, so uh, let me. Uh, okay, to the audience Holy and to those. Who, uh, shit. He said they. He, he said I have a CCW, which imme- I thought Creedence Clearwater Revival. Sure. Yeah. And I thought, uh, what's that? CCW. Oh, they, they stole his. C- they yeah. stole his his record. Um, so they <laughs> went. So you have your concealed carry, and they went into your Correct. console and stole your gun. My gun and my wallet. Is it your console so then, in that car where you where you had to like push that secret button and it's like a the spaceship thing? Yes. How yes. would they know to get in there? Yes. Okay. Dude, I don't know. I have no idea. All right. So wh- okay. So hold on. Why is your wallet in your console? Because it's so fat that it won't fit in his because uh, when I pocket. It it doesn't fit very well in my back pocket. Well, why is that? So when I leave it, because I'm a baller. Because <laughs> you're a baller, dude. You know you are the yeah, one who. No, I'm just kidding. But you're the one who can control exactly how much stuff goes in that wallet. It's not like it came from the factory that fat. You've just started shoving like I don't know Baskin and Robbins coupons in there. You don't have to do that, you know. Right. Baskin I know. Robbins. Well, now, it, but it's better than having it in the wife's hands. Now those guys are gonna. Now those guys are gonna be walking around with this huge bulge in their pants. So they, so they got your gun. So, so what do you have to do? They got my gun. What do you have to do when they get your gun? Like, do you well, have to I go report them. that? Or, okay, okay, oh wow, okay. What happened? You chased after them. So when they have your gun, so I, started, I started chasing after. Them. Yeah, when they had my gun. Did you know that they had your like, gun? Josh, yeah, I knew. Okay, you really wanted those Baskin wanted Robbins coupons, didn't yeah, you? Right? I heard you say that and it was a good one. I so I had to say. 
I'm just like Led Zeppelin. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. This, we have a so live, I, we have we a live studio after. audience here, Josh. There's a live studio audience here, and yeah. so they're, uh, oh, they're they're adding yeah. lines. Yeah. So so go ahead. So, go ahead. So, so you, you chase them. Back. Yeah. So I wanted it back, and then my boss is like, Josh, stop, stop, stop. They got your gun. They're going to shoot you. So I finally gave in, stopped. It took the cops 20 minutes to get there. Not even joking. Mm-hmm. 20 minutes. Unacceptable. 20 so minutes? When the cop got there, I said, 20 minutes. So when the cop got there, I was a jerk to him. I said, well, I said, it's a good thing no one was shot, and it wasn't a serious emergency. Well, why do you say that? I said, because I called you stinking 20 minutes ago, and now you show up. I said, you could have gotten the guy if you would have gotten here when I called. Yeah. So I'm sure that went over well. Yeah, I'm sure they're really going to work hard in your case now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Treat him like that, Josh. All right, so go ahead. So belligerent. Are you so part, are you part of Black Lives that, Matter? And then he left. Don't confuse him, man. Uh, go ahead. I don't, go ahead no, Josh. I'm not. Go ahead, Did you Josh. just say, I don't think so? I don't. <laughs> so told him, go ahead. told him the whole situation. Like he kept asking to see my CCW to get my number. I told him, I said, I've already told you once. I said, they stole my wallet. I said, all my information, everything's in my wallet. And then he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, uh, he says, I'd ask him, I said, are you the only person that I need to file my gun with, missing with or got stole? And he says, I don't know. He says, I wear a badge, so I get to carry a gun. He says, I didn't have to take no CCW class. I said, and that's a shame. I said, you should have taken one. He didn't like me too much, but either way, either now, way. Did he did he rough you up? No, but th- that, this is this is where the story gets better. It gets better. He me. He does. He uh-huh. called me about. I almost boy. The reason I didn't tune in to you right away was because I was on the phone with the officer. They oh, they okay. got my gun back. They got my gun back. He was robbing a store in downtown Akron, like I think they said at five thirty tonight. Yeah, and he had my gun on him. It was two sixteen-year-olds that broke into my car. Whoa! So, really? So, yeah. So then I asked the officer. I said, "I said, I know you probably don't do this too much." I said, "But can I have five minutes with him?" And he starts <laughs> laughing. Okay, He's, to the audience. And Josh, and a- <laughs> they caught the guys. They caught them. Two sixteen-year-olds. They were robbing a, a store. And when they told Josh, Josh asked them for a solid if he could have five minutes with them alone. <laughs> All right. So, and and Josh, what was your plan and, and, during those five well, minutes? What were you going to do? What did the cops say? I was going to teach him a lesson. To You're going to teach him a lesson. Teach him a lesson. Okay. Yeah. But right. what, what the cops said? What did the cops say? Did the cop let you do it? The cop laughed. Yeah, he said he laughed. He, he laughed. He said he said I wish I could, buddy. He says, but then they would be pressing charges against you. Maybe if you hadn't been so rude to him at the begin with, yeah. maybe he would let you have those five minutes, Josh. Exactly. Do you ever think about that? Well, I or, wish he could have. Maybe if you donated to the I FOP. Yeah, I yeah. definitely would have taught yeah. him a couple lessons this year. Holy wow. cow. That is, no. that's There's stunning. my story. That's awesome. Now, I that's have a, a question story. for you. Uh, in this past year, you got married, right? I did. Congratulations, first of all. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Okay. I was just waiting for the thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so is there any room in your house, Josh, that it hasn't yes, happened in? You know what uh, I'm saying? Any room. Oh, the spare bedroom. Not, the in spare the, bedroom. not in the spare bedroom yet? No, we haven't yet. Well, tonight's Has night. she, though? She could have with Brad. <laughs> Who the hell's Brad? <laughs> so he said in the spare Jeff bedroom. Knows. Jeff knows. I know. Jeff says, no, uh, not in the spare room. He's like, but she has. And he's like, yeah, maybe with Brad. <laughs> Who is Brad? It was one of her ex-boyfriends. It, uh, it was a real long story. I about, take, I take yeah. it she's not in the room right now, is she? No, she's not. She's upstairs. Of course she is. Because <laughs> you're not going to tell that story in front of her. <laughs> right. But Brad's, no. but Brad's yeah. listening. Yeah. Well, that, maybe, maybe uh, it was Brad who stole your uh, gun. I think the call failed. Oh, no. So let's call him back so we can have a proper goodbye. Uh, recent. You got bad reception around here, buddy. Something's going on today. That's what you get for getting T-Mobile. Nah, that's not T-Mobile. No. <laughs> it's saying again, call failed. How's everybody else's phone service going? Sorry. Sorry. You got, you got all those kids in the basement on the Wi-Fi. Well, turn it off. We got a podcast we're trying to do here. Yeah, serious shit. I 
I'm back. You hang up on us? Josh Lovett, this no, is... No, you hung up on me. This is Sergeant Johnson. <laughs> About that five minutes you wanted. <laughs> yeah. You're going to give it to me? Yeah. So <laughs> why aren't you going back to work with Jeff? Is it because he scared you so, too often? No, so they called me actually last week and asked me to come back. Who did? The the contracting agency that I was there originally. Oh, they, okay. Yeah, they said that they were slammed with work and yeah. they need contractors yeah. and the contractors keep only lasting like a month and then going away and they said that I lasted my whole term. And Are you going to go back? Come back? Are you going to do you it? come back, man? I asked her. I said, I said, if you can get me a, full, a contract, a full-time position, yeah. I'll go back. And she hasn't contacted me back. Yeah, they won't. What's up with that, Jeff? I don't know. We you do, know, you got to know people down there. Uh, dude, I do know people, and nobody can get hired in. It's How did been, you get uh, hired in? You're magic. not contract. I, let's just say uh, mm-hmm. it's more than just a pretty face, if mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. I do. So I told him, I said, I'd go back if you got me a full, if I had to, if I served my tip service and then had to do a full time. We just, we just had one guy who, uh, we're, we're, I mean, we're looking for, for new people because we just had one guy call off for three weeks in a row. He called off three (laughs) weeks in a row? Three weeks in a row. He came back. Yeah. Three weeks in a row. What, for, what was his reason? Uh, He said it was a back problem or I don't know, some bullshit. Yeah. So what are you yeah. what are you doing now, Josh? What what work are you doing now uh, in Akron? We do. Uh, I work at McNeil. So the last two projects that I've been on since I've been there have been rocket boosters for NASA. Rocket boosters for them, NASA. And we oh, just sent them off to program. you. We yeah, they're letting you to touch Utah. this stuff, Josh. Oh, God. They are, buddy. They're letting me wire them up. That's a little. That's a little disconcerting. Uh, do you know what disconcerting well, means, Josh? What's that? Disconcerting. <laughs> do you know what that means? I did. You cut out a little bit. Disconcerting. Do you know? What oh yeah, means? you're not. You're, you don't have total faith in me, basically. That's pretty that's good. A, that's good. Yeah. Even if you BS your way through, that's still pretty good. Uh, we, we didn't. Get, did we get to cover this last time about the the words or whatever, Josh? What's a rock spider? A rock spider, an yeah. un, uneducated white guy. There you go. Where? Where? In where, Africa. In Africa, yeah. a rock spider. Use is that in next Africa, time you go to Africa. A rock Africa spider is an go. uneducated white guy, basically a moron. Mm. Were people calling you a rock spider? No, oh, they good. they think they think white guys are like the best thing ever. Really? From America? Do they yeah. tell, do they tell you that? They they literally, if an American comes to South Africa, they wonder why are you there first of all, and how much money do you have? Mm. We always call it the accent discount. Accent uh, discount. That's that is vastly true. Do they do they uh, like think you're especially special because uh, because you're a ginger? Exactly. Yeah. What, well, no. no. Do they no. think that your red no. hair makes you magical or something? Like you're a wizard yeah, of some sort? Yeah, unicorn. Wizard. <laughs> a unicorn. <laughs> All right. Uh, last question: Were you happy or sad about the Trump victory? Happy. All right. I was glad Trump won. All right. Very good. Racist. Um, Josh, let me just tell you something. I'm so thrilled. Yeah. I'm so thrilled that we were able to talk to you tonight. I didn't know if it was going to happen. And when you chimed in on Facebook Live, I was so excited because this right here, this is gold, my friend. <laughs> it is. It Great is story. gold. Yeah. So we'll have to do it again sometime, all right? Okay. You, you shoot me a text and I'll be there. All right. In the meantime, go, uh, go take care of that, uh, that guest spare room. Bedroom? Yeah, yeah, spare bedroom. I will. All Think right. of me the whole time, all right? Don't. All right, buddy. Y'all right. have a good night. Scream all my right. name. We'll see you, man. Bye. All right. I love Bye. you. <laughs> all right, that was awesome. You, would you like to take a break? Or are you yeah, good? I'm all right. Does We're anyone need good. to take a break? Who said yes? <laughs> Thank God We're for all, editing, huh? Yeah. All right. We're, we all learn as we go here. Sure. Um, all right. Try not to do that too much. I'm I know. Sure. I'm going to try not to. Okay. So... Okay. Walking Dead. Okay. Yeah. What are you thinking? What am I thinking? What? Do you watch the I don't Walking Dead? I don't watch it. So you'll read the comics, mm-hmm. but you don't even watch the show. Uh, we do. I mean, I'm on se- like season three or something like that. It's not a, a, that big of a, of a thing for me. Yeah. Uh, the, look, man, the book is always way better. I don't care what it is, what it, uh, anything. The, 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 anything. Incorrect. The, 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 In this case, incorrect. No. no not, Let not. me tell you why. Oh, Jesus. You ready? Yeah. Because there are characters in here 
that aren't in the book. Okay. And there are the 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 drawing can only convey so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and and live action can only convey so much that that the printed page. That's true. Well, can do. Okay, but the printed page in my mind can do things like draw things out there that may not really exist in real life. But now that we have CGI, all of a sudden, now that's all of a sudden even a possibility. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is on the show, like some of the acting, some of the performances are, are, are better than what I think the the comic mm-hmm. okay. could convey. Um, so you're in season three. Yeah, something like that. Have we they- just finished watching Jessica Jones. You ever watch that? No. <sighs> like you look at me all disconcerted mm, like this. Yeah. Is mm-hmm. that like... Uh, Downton thing. Abbey? What is that? No, no, God, do I, dude? My wife's right there. I'm straight. Huh. I, mean, I, I don't want to watch Downton, Downton Abbey. Abbey. So I mean, I, well, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you listen to Prince. I, I mean, do. Who I knows? love Prince. Okay, and George um, Michael. So. I love George Michael. Uh, we know you um, do. I know. So let's but let's talk about that for a second. Yeah. But Can we what? talk about George Michael? <laughs> sure. So. Um, I am, so in case anyone doesn't know, I am, and any of my listeners, I'm, I am a proud lover, and this is going to sound wrong, of George Michael. Now, it doesn't mean I was actually one of his lovers, but I loved, no, I wasn't in that bathroom, but I was outside well, you were, the bathroom. Yeah, you were I was outside there, the bathroom. Okay. I'll put that okay. picture on, I'll put that picture yeah. on, the, on, the, on the page. Okay. I'm a huge George Michael fan. Um, those of you who know that I sing, I, like, my voice, the way I sing in my mind, I want to sing like George Michael, because for, for me growing up, his voice, as far as a male vocalist, was was the best. It was just the smoothest, uh, richest, uh, great delivery. So You can't uh, even say this with a straight face. You can't I, even say I, it. Look at you. It just you're, brings you're, me you're, joy. You're I'm not giggling. Like, it just brings me joy. <laughs> he makes me happy. Like, um, I don't that, that this is the thing that I don't get. Like, you know, George Michael is not known for like Prince. I get. OK. Look, Prince had a whole thing, blah, 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 and everything. People love Freddie Mercury. He had, he had a voice that, that was unmatched, you know? Okay, yeah. that, that's great. Even, even Robert Plant, he had a great voice, you know, and everything back in the day. But George Michael is not, you don't go, oh, my God, what a great vocalist. When, when he sang, wake me up before you go, go, no. oh, my God, it just gave me chills. No, like, because, no. because that, wasn't, that wasn't George Michael. That, I mean, that oh, was George God. Michael singing, but that sure. was Wham. Okay. No, and, and I think. What other songs did, what songs did, what was his big hit outside of Wham? Um, outside well I, I would give you um, Freedom 90 it's not my favorite but it is it is a huge it is a huge hit okay. uh, Father Figure One More Try um, um, Faith was a, a big one uh, he had he had a lot of songs but here, here's okay. the thing this, right, this is the thing I do understand like to the American listener mm-hmm. they don't really know George Michael because uh, he was here with Wham and then his, when he decided to go solo, his very first album, Faith, was enormous. And so, uh, did you guys know that he was actually, he did a Pepsi commercial? Did you guys know that? Okay, oh, you, my yeah, God. Mike knew. Mike knew. <laughs> well, okay. well, yeah. So he, Look, Mike isn't the best per- person to ask about musical taste. Am, am I right? Come on. Uh, uh, who does uh, he like? <laughs> Hanson? What are you? What are you? I, who do you like? Yeah, yeah, she does too. But um, My, wait, after, wait, hold on, Mike. Name me three of your favorite bands. The Beatles. The okay. Beatles. Okay. Oasis. Oasis. Uh, right, right, there we oh, go. Wow. And I just no, need two. That's, that's interesting. <laughs> and Metallica. Metallica is always his go-to. I, thing. I think that's a really solid three to name. He had. I think he, he gave a, a list before. Uh, I remember of of all these these bands that he liked or songs that he liked, and, and like there was twenty five of them. One I recognized. It was a Metallica song. The rest was like. I don't even know, like stuff that you would probably listen to. Yeah. It was just yeah. that Mariah Carey. Yeah. Uh, Mariah, <laughs> before she was crazy. Did you see her on New Year's Eve? Yeah. Oh, that was gold. <laughs> that was just gold. Um, so back to George Michael because I'm going to bring it back. There. Sure, go, um, go for it. Let's as soon as Faith ended, and that, and by the way, I'm one of the, I, I've I've only met like a few people that actually ever saw George Michael live in the United States. He only toured here one time. One time he toured here. So he tours here. The next album he releases is, it's called Listen Without Prejudice. He does no facial videos for it. So he's not out there shaking his ass. There's no him making out with supermodels. There's nothing like that Mm -hmm. at all. 
And it's like a really serious, critically acclaimed album. Mm-hmm. And the United States audiences just said, nope, because they're still wanting Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go. They're still wanting Faith. They're still wanting Father Figure, stuff like that. And he's like, that's not where I'm going. It is a really good album. And what happened is it went down. And then, then in the 90s, then he gets busted in the, uh, in the bathroom out there uh-huh. in Beverly Hills. And, and his career in the United States was never the same again. But in England, in Europe, he was huge. He, I mean, I'll give you an example. Um, it was, uh, what year is it? It's 2017. I think it was in 2013. He sold out Wembley Stadium like three nights in a row. Now, I would, I would equate that maybe to Michael Stanley because, <laughs> right. because Michael Stanley probably sold out the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Dance stadium. Saloon in Brunswick. Maybe. Now he yeah. could. But yeah. like, but but that's 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 something considerable in my mind that you're going to sell out Wembley Stadium three nights in a row. Not just everybody's okay, going to do I, that. You know, I, I I hear stuff like that all the time, and then, and then the cynical part of me always questions: Well, did they did they half the stadium? Was was he also playing with uh, the the reunion of the Beatles? Was he also you know who knows? <laughs> it was I mean, a festival. W- w- right? Was it a festival? <laughs> <laughs> you he was, know, he was in the parking lot. Wake me yeah, up. Before, before and, and, and over now here, we, sir. Park over here, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and now he can say, well, I sold out Wem- yeah. Wembley Stadium. No, it wasn't that. Okay. You it was, so. it was, it was right. legit. Right. So I'll, I, I, I'll take and, and here's the thing that troubles me the most. Yeah. And none of, you prob- you? none of you probably even know this. This man died on December 25th, Christmas Day. He's still not buried. It's February 11th. Oh, the humanity. It, it, yeah. Yeah. See, this is the kind of oh. stuff that Trump needs to get behind. I, 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 amen. Thanks okay. a lot, Trump. I understand. You notice who was in office when he died? Obama. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, true. Thanks, true. Obama. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I understand not wanting these people from these seven countries to come in, but for, sure. for crying out loud, can we get this man can in the ground already? Least, yeah, exactly. Why? What's what's the deal? Is he uh, like? Is it because of his uh, faith or something? No, no pun no. intended. Yeah, no. He. Um, it was a really crazy thing. So, like his quote unquote boyfriend at the time. He's well, the there's one. no quote unquote man. This is 2017. Just watch what I'm going to listen. Just hear me out. Just hear me out. The reason I say that is because there are people who are questioning whether or not he really was with this guy anymore. Okay. People are saying that he and George were, they were basically broken up for like six months. So the guy is saying, no, 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 no. We were going to be spending Christmas, uh, Christmas together. People did, people uh, contest that. But he said, I showed up there that morning. I went in and there he was and he was dead. And they've played the 911 call. He's like, he's blue. He's cold. Da, 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 da. And then they say this, where were you last night? He's like, um, I slept in my car. That's not me making that up. Okay. That was his answer. Well, I slept in my car. Okay. And the moment that happened, they had initially done like an, a, not a full autopsy, but they had done some investigation and they're still pushing it back now for toxicology to try to find out what was it that killed him. So I thought they already came back and it was a heart thing or something. Yeah. But I think that there was, I think there are other things that they're not fully uh, saying yet that happened. Prince's thing, when Prince died, it's, it took about a week or two for them to finally come out and say what it was that finally killed him. This thing has taken even longer. So I, I think for a while that, that his boyfriend really was a suspect. The whole thing of I was sleeping outside in my car, that, that just made no sense. So anyway, I'm still a little sad uh, that, that George passed away. And uh, we have a moment of silence for George. There we go. Thank you. That's all you I do. appreciate that. Sure. All right. So um, let's go ahead and let's let's go ahead and play our game. Now that says feet. Um, so give me that. Oh, there oh, there we go. There you go. Does anybody need a break? All right. We'll take a we'll take a break. Okay. So everybody, we're going to take a break. It's been an hour and three minutes. We're going to take a break. We'll pause in three, two, one. Stacy. All right. Oh, you don't have to tell this man. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding That's me? Right. Was there ever a thought in like your mind like to protest Dunkin' Donuts when they opened that up there in Brunswick? Honestly, yeah. swear to God, yeah. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> Stacy over there loves the coffee. I, oh God, uh, yeah. Well. Are you a coffee but, fan of, like, does Donutland do coffee? Oh, yeah. Is it yeah. any good? I have no idea. I've never drank a cup of coffee in my life. Okay. 
That's the same as Deanna. Yeah. What's your reason for not drinking coffee? Uh, it tastes like sweat socks. Have, that would imply you've tasted uh, I have. sweat socks. I have. Yeah. Hmm. It's uh, it's it's disgusting to me. I don't know. It just I, I it's bean juice. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's like bean this. Juice. It's like, you know, when they talk about Trump with this immigration ban and how they say, I can't wait to hear how you bring this together. I am. I am going to bring this together because you go, uh, OK, it's an it's an immigration ban. And then they say, but if if Obama did it, it would be a refugee pause. And it's all about wording, and it's how you say something, just yeah. like you know your friend always yep. says. It's how you say something. And if you were to, if they called coffee bean juice, mm. they you would never. People would be like, oh, "I'm not drinking that piss." Mm. But not true. you know. But if it was always called, it's always called coffee, and it sounds so coffee. You know, like you you know, it's putting different emphasis on on different things. Oh, you're coffee. referring to. Um donut yeah i'd like to have a donut please like my a friend at work says uh d- so calls her lady gaga lady gaga yeah i like that i do i do too i, yeah. I say donut because it makes me feel like it's a little bit healthier if i eat that i'll have a donut yeah. um Croissant. what are some other things we were talking about that night about what, things that you should intentionally what was it oh uh it was something with onion rings how was I pronouncing onion rings that night? Onion ring. Maybe. Is that it? I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Something like it that. It was really funny that night. Let me it tell was, you. It was, <laughs> it was hilarious. Oh, sure. after that six pack of root beer, we were. Oh, my boy. God. Yeah. All right. So we're going to play a game right now that we've never played on, on this show before. I am okay. super excited about it. Oh, Seriously. my God. Because it's, it's, it's going to be really, it's organic is really what it is. So what I, we, I hate that word. Really? Right there, I'll tell you right now, I hate organic. Everything's friggin' organic or gluten free. All my pictures now are gluten free. Did I tell you that? No. Yep. And well, organic. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. New for 2017. Free are they free yeah, range? They're pictures? free range. Right. Yep. Cage yeah. free. Yep. Cage free pictures. Yep. That is that is good stuff right there. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm gonna say this one more thing, yeah. because this all this stuff that we're talking about right now is all these words that everybody needs. Uh, do you guys remember when you were growing up the story of the um, the story of the emperor with no clothes, okay. or the emperor's new clothes? Yeah. Remember that story? Are you familiar with that story? Mm-hmm. So um, there's a king, and these guys come into town. They go, "Oh, we have some, we're going to make some just great clothes for you." And so they start making these clothes that they're that they're invisible. There, there's nothing there, but people just keep going. Oh, oh, I, I, it's so expensive. It's so it's so rich. We we. We better act like we see it and we get it. And so we have to keep talking it mm-hmm. up, talking it up. And this keeps going on. They keep building him clothes, which they're doing nothing. But he can't see it, but he doesn't want to acknowledge that he doesn't see anything until finally there's a parade when he's walking around in his underwear and a child says he's in his underwear. And this is what I think of when I look at Hollywood. And it's and people can say what they want right now, but I initially felt this way about Lady Gaga. Gaga. Lady Gaga. Yeah. Is that... Um, I it was just a bunch of hype, but there's no real substance there. Mm. Now I think that as time has gone on, I'm more impressed with her than I was initially. But um, that's how Hollywood is. What I, I really think about when she came out with wearing neat, right? Well, I have a lot of uh, opinions on Lady Gaga as mm-hmm. well. Uh, you know, like everybody's uh, talking about this whole ha- halftime Super Bowl show, and it was a cool show. Don't get me wrong; it was it was it was really neat. Uh, the, this, the thing that gets me, though, is just that, that people are, uh, I, I don't know, it, it, they can't get over the fact that it was lip-synced, first off. She didn't and, lip-sync. Uh, yes, she did. She absolutely lip-synced. You're, you're, you're an absolute moron if you didn't think. She, it, was, it was interspersed, don't get me wrong. Some of the stuff she did, and she had a live mic at certain times. But there was, if you watch that, there was no way that she was running around like that, singing as perfectly as she did. Simple, uh, d- didn't, no. She didn't jump from the top of the thing. That was that was uh, uh, false as well. And the drones were recorded days before, yeah. which is all fine and, and, and yeah. everything. And, it, and it's all a fantasy and everything. But, you know, everybody's making it out like, uh, you know, it's this, you know. I'm going to disagree with thing. you on the lip syncing part. You can disagree all you want. It's not, I'm telling you, there's no way. If you, You're telling me this you because you know it. you have a buddy that says, no, I was there and she did it. Or it's your strong belief. It's my strong belief. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. So we're going to go back to our. Which my strong beliefs are facts, but all right, go ahead. What's, I just want to see if it was Becky laughing. 
<laughs> she's yeah. It's like she's, seeing she's a, a whale breach. You know, you just want to see. Uh, Oh, no. uh, did you just call my no, wife? No, I'm not saying uh-huh. no. Uh-huh. I'm saying uh, when, a wha- when a whale will breach, it's a rare sight. Oh. I'm no way trying to <laughs> say that your wife is like a whale breaching. Okay. Uh-huh. She, no, not oh, happening. Man. Suddenly now I'm the offensive one. Yeah. All right. Thanks, so the, Trump. The game is going to be like this. It's going to be huge. Just let me huge. tell you that right now. It's going to be huge. China. I know more about podcasting. I don't know. So um, here's how it's going to go. Uh, we asked some people on Facebook for random words. They wrote in. And so I'm going to start giving you these words, and I'll tell some stories too. What are some words that come to your – or some stories that come to your mind when I give you these words? So I'm going to give you one right now. Are you ready? Yep. Here's the first one that, that Facebook wrote in. Virginity. Next. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm gonna, I don't know. I uh, virginity. Uh, I, I don't like what? What do you want? Do you want me to? Do? What do you think? Is there is there a story? Is there that comes a story to your head? that uh, comes to my mind? Um, virginity. Uh, Here, I'll give you. Let me give you an example. Yeah, go ahead. All yeah. Right, so, go ahead. I'm, I'm in seventh grade. Okay. Maggie. Yeah. I'm in seventh grade. Yeah. And um, I'm living in Zanesville, Ohio. Okay. And um, so, how old are you when you're seventh grade? Like thirteen years old. Okay. And I can remember. This is true. I can remember laying on the floor of my bedroom there and looking at the looking at the ceiling thinking, I've got to get rid of this virginity. This has got to go. Okay. And I remember thinking, because I'd watched a lot of TV, and I thought, I know that there are prostitutes in New York City. And when I can, Holy shit. I'm going to go to New York City, and I'm going to get a prostitute. And this is absolutely really? what went through my head at 13 years old. Yeah, and I'm gonna. Little did I know they cost money. Well, not only that, oh. but but I little did I know that like all of a sudden there could be a thing called girlfriends, and like sure. it's for free theoretically. Right. But yeah, theoretically, theoretically, yeah, no, yeah. It's free. all right, right, yeah. But that's honestly when I think about virginity because I just I just I I couldn't wait to get rid of it. I was like addicted to getting rid of it, but it still took forever. I'm still hoping any day now it can. The jack and off count at all? No, or? sir. No, sir. So, do you have a story? Uh, I don't know. Not really. I guess I don't, I don't know. All right, about fine. virginity. I mean, I, I I lost my virginity to my wife. How's that? That's that's a weird one, right? Yes. How many people can say uh, you know that uh, that that's the case? You know, I've been, yeah. I've been with my wife since I was fourteen, and uh, or 15, I just turned fifteen. Not that we did it right then, mom. If you're listening, but. Uh, <laughs> And um, so, uh, you waited till yeah. you got married. Absolutely, yes, yes. The past, yeah. we we actually we uh, waited till we got married, and we we prayed for a week. Then we finally consummated into uh, into sexual relations. Yeah, nine. Yeah, then we had a child, and, huh. and never happened again. Mm. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, in the, you know, in this day and age, with everybody, you know, you got your tinders and your you know, plenty of fish and all this shit, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, everybody always says, Oh, do you feel like you left missed out on, uh, on anything? Just, be, you know, be only having one girl. And I said, well, do you, you know, no, I don't. I mean, yeah, I missed out on things, you know, uh, you know, either way you're going to miss out on something. You know what I mean? You, you know, uh-huh. you got, uh, you know, people who, people who were sleep, who sleep around or, or just people who just, nor- you know, normal today you know just whatever just banging every so often or whatever you're you're not gonna have the same experience that i had of keeping with the same person that whole time you know does so, it bother you at all that josh has had more women than you josh <laughs> yeah uh who said that he's had more women than i'm me? kidding exactly yeah all right uh, i think you're i think you're tied well <laughs> maybe but he uh let's just say i think we are tied but uh he was in africa for a long time so uh you know i think there's there some things going on with tigers and okay, lions all out right. there so the next word they've given us is yeah. the word fight fight what comes to your mind any story come to your mind about fight fight club oh, i love fight club you ever seen fight club i am tyler durden mm. that's right okay you think that's about the that? story that comes to your mind yeah that's the, no uh fight uh oh my god i was in so many fights in high school oh becky was in a fight in high school <laughs> And, uh, oh no, this is great because, because like there was a, uh, look, I'm acting like we're the only ones here. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So there we go. 
So like Becky was in a fight in high school, and I think I told this one actually before on on, on a previous podcast. But the uh, long story short is, you know, uh, all these jock assholes would would you know we we got it all the time because we we were together for all through high school and everything and you know through high school bullshit people try to break you up or get jealous or you know get pissed at you or whatever and you know and, and I was 10 times more opinionated even in probably in high school than I am now so I would get in wow. fights all the time and people would get mad or whatever and this was even before facebook yeah so uh so then to get through me then they would get to to Becky so then they they had this this big fat chick come up and try to pick a fight with Becky and Becky ended up beating the shit out of her so uh yeah so that was that was a great fight and um uh uh I don't know I got I, I got to spend it a bunch of times for different fights for Did different you get things. in fist fights too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And did you win them all or lose them all or was uh, it, was it, it was it was usually like a tie like the teacher would break it up or whatever I mean you know I you know How long I'm, did mm-hmm. like did you have like a strategy like you have to walk around for 3 minutes going go on go on Go on. Did you like take your shirt off and all that kind of stuff? No, I, I remember the one strategy was like this dude, uh, um, like on, on the bus, uh, had, uh, had grabbed Becky's tits before on the bus. I don't know. Should I say breasts? Sorry. Both of them? Or just one, maybe. Okay. I don't know. And, uh, so then, um, this is the that bus was like, driver? Or no, this no, this was okay. just like, like a kid on the bus. And okay. he was like one of the bad kids, you know, at school who was like a, um, you know, like the a special needs kind of kid, not a, not a, not like a you know drooling special needs, but like you know, uh, like special needs, yeah. like just keep talking. It's the, good. You know the, <laughs> you know the, you know like bad kid class type of special needs. You know what I mean? Who this couldn't? Is, this is Jeff you know, Henson, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, uh, not you know. Well, anyway, so what cracks, it, me that, up, this, what cracks this, me up is when you make yourself speechless. Right. <laughs> Right, I do. I do kind of do that often, but it, on, that happened on a Friday. So then, like all, uh, all, all weekend, I was like stewing about it, you know. And and then I, uh, I remember I just went up and I went into high school. I remember that, and I just I, I knew as soon as I saw him, I, I, as soon as I saw him, I just started swinging, just started going going to town. Did you so. connect? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, quite a few then times. All of a sudden, you look like the special. No, 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 absolutely, yeah, right. You're just <laughs> That's not cool, man. Well, I'm just what are you, you saying? No, no but uh, yeah, I, I connected m- many times. Yeah. Mm, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So took all care right. of that. I'm going to give you another word. Yeah. Gambling. Gambling. Uh, Kenny Rogers. Mm. Oh, no. Uh, oh, boy. Gambling. Is gambling a disease? I'm going to ask you a question. That's not how this game works. Oh yeah, it is. This game works. That now you that's, have a that's, word, and then you tell a story. That's how you. That's how it works. Right, that's my story. I want to know. Do you think gambling is, is a disease? Well, the word disease, I think, has morphed as time has gone on. Okay. Um, we, I think disease initially was this thing where we said we can find something, and you can take a pill, and and when I say find something, I mean like you can physically probably find something there mm-hmm. with a disease with polio or cancer, cancer or, or, sure. or AIDS or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. uh, physiologically there's mm-hmm. something there. And now all of a sudden when you start entering the world of um, psychological health, then you have issues like depression or you have issues of um, paranoid schizophrenia and gambling or various addictions so is it a disease? I guess I could say there are some things like addictive behaviors. I think it can, it can carry down. I don't know. Well, that you really danced around that one. Yeah, thank I'm you. I'm going to say no. Okay. What do you think about that? That's fine. Addiction, gambling. Ten I, bucks says you're wrong. I'll, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll bet you my heroin I'm not. <laughs> All right, uh, so you got no- you know, well, no, 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 hold on, hold on, okay. motherfucker. I'm listen, listen. I'm telling you, gambling and and uh, and the addiction and everything, and uh, you know, they people that that's a thing. I, I see these commercials. Alcoholism, alcoholism, exactly. All, all that stuff, all, the heroin epidemic, all this stuff. They always say, oh well, you know, it's it's uh, it's 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 not it's not your character. It's, you know, it's, it's just who you are and, and you know, it's a, it's a disease and mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Well, no, it's not, it's, it's a, it's a behavior that, I mean, maybe uh, initially, you know, it, maybe heroin or something like that would, would change your actual 
brain functions or something to, to make you a, a different person. But your, your choice is, is yours and yours alone to make with that. It's, it's, it's as, uh, as simple as that. It's, uh, you know, people want to want to say, oh, well, I have an addiction or I have a, I have this disease called addiction. And so that's what's making me, uh, you know, drink all the time. And this and, removes, and removes some guilt. It, 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 it does. It, absolutely. It, it takes it. It takes the responsibility away. And they say, well, I'm not responsible for they You know, I'm it's not me gambling my money away. It's it's this disease. And and to me that that that's a slap in the face to anybody who has an actual disease like cancer or something like that where mm-hmm. you know you're, you know you 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 can't help that. And they say, well, it's it's not just uh, you, it, you know you could still. You, Is there anything that could be done or shown to you to convict you or to convince you that it actually would be a disease? Well, like, hey. Nothing makes him laugh harder than gambling. Than nothing. I know exactly. Conversations. These two over here giggling like schoolgirls. Okay. We're not I bringing them back. You said she never again. laughs. I know. I, she doesn't except when she was Stacy. I don't there's, know. What there's the, that whale again. Exactly. No, I don't mean it that. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, is there anything that? Uh, yeah. Is there anything that you could be shown that would convince you? Like, oh, okay. Yeah, that probably is it. Well, like, what if they were able to show you something in the actual brain? Mm-hmm. A, a, a person who is um, born. Mm-hmm. And let's just say they were able to look at the brain scan of a child whose parents were alcoholic. Okay. And all of a sudden you see this, and you look at this child compared to others. And they grab other kids who also had parents who were alcoholic. And you could look at the brains and see there's something different going on here. Would that convince you? No. Okay. So, uh, so no it, stories about gambling. No. <laughs> well, that that's my story. It's uh, that's, that's my opinion on gambling. Oh, I okay. mean, I, you know, you got, uh, you know... It, certain people are, are going to be more inclined to to maybe have a, 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 a you know to some sort of a gambling problem or or maybe something like that. But ultimately, it's still your choice. I mean, you you know you can say that about the 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 brains or whatever all you want, but I mean, you're still it's st- it's still a choice that that you have. You you, okay. do, you don't you know okay you know sorry right. go ahead. Um, you don't want to talk about this. I'm sorry. Do you have a story about running? Running. Mm-hmm. I, uh, let's see, running, running. I can't run. Yeah. You're a big walker though. I am a big walker. I, we love, we love walking and, and hiking, but, uh, I can't run my, my knees hurt like crazy. I don't know what the mm. deal is. I'm just, God, I'm only 42. It's not like it's a, you know, not right. like, uh, not like I'm not, you know, 46 or something. I mean, oh my God, I'd be I'm almost dead, but, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I see all these people running all the time, and like, oh my god, running is so good for you know. It, you know if you see me running, run because there's something chasing me. I, I'm not. What I've noticed is rarely do they look like they're having a good time, and most of them, it's if it's for your health, that most of them look as if they're on death's door doorstep uh, right there. I like agree. At any moment, they could just keel over and die. My uh, my story. Can I tell a story? Go, yeah. All right. It's, it's your, my it's story your show. is um, about running is I was in seventh grade and I'm lying there on the floor of my bedroom thinking, I just got to get a prostitute and then run. Okay. <laughs> to New York run City. Run to New York City. Okay. Yeah. So, um, all right. True story. So um, I'm dating this girl. I'm living in uh, Zanesville again. And uh, we're part of this corporate cup. You ever heard of companies that will do these, like these, all these corporations will get together and they'll all like, yeah. do these like uh, athletic events. My company's into that. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So I'm with this girl at the time and I, and I want to impress her. And so she, and so our team needed somebody to run the mile. Okay. All right. So I hadn't run the mile. At this point in time, I'm probably 23, 24 years old. I have not ran in, in five or six years, but I figure I can do it. You know, I, I, I figure I can do it. And so we get there into, into town and we go running. And, uh, and so I take off. And all I'm doing, I know there's no chance I'm going to win this thing. Mm-hmm. But all I'm doing is I'm just like spotting people like I should be able to beat that guy. He's good looking. I need to be able to beat him. Sure. And so I'm just like picking guys off and I got to beat them. I got to beat them. Got to beat them. And You're picking out all the hot guys. Yeah, I'm picking okay. out all the hot guys and go I'm ahead. beating them. All right, right. I'm, I'm with listening to George Michael on your yeah. Walkman. Without a doubt. Without a <laughs> okay. doubt. Okay. So I, I 
finish this race. Don't I don't win it, but I finished this race, and and I'd never walked. I ran the whole way, and um, I was really proud of myself. It, it was really it was a good moment. So I'm now walking back to my car, and it's at that moment in time that my entire body seems to catch on fire. I am burning from my toes to my eyebrows. My body is on fire. And then my body just clutches up and vomit just as I'm walking is just shooting out of my mouth. Like I'm walking straight like ah, and it's just <laughs> vomit. And it's not very sexy. Like my girlfriend, you don't I don't think, think no. she was not as impressed not with impressed. it. No. So Do you think Deanna would have been impressed? No, no, no. no okay. No. She'd yeah. been laughing. Okay. But it, yeah. So when literally when I hear the word running, that's what I think about because my body says, I don't want to do this. Look, runners have to have to put band-aids over their nipples because it makes their nipples bleed. Anything that makes your nipples bleed. Johnny, is that true? Because Johnny's a big runner. Is that true? Do you put... Yeah. They really do. You. Yeah. Do you put anything no. over your... Because you you're don't. you not concerned with your nipples, Johnny? It's just, there's chafe guards. There's chafe guards. Yeah. Are you running without a shirt? Why, why are you putting... <laughs> what the hell's yeah. going on that you got to put a, a band-aid over your nipple... Uh huh. So a lot of moisture. Okay. Say it again. Chafing in your boy parts. Uh, when I walk for that happened when I was in Australia. When I walked, I'm like, holy cow! This this needs to stop too. I can't do this anymore. What like you were getting bat wings or what? I don't want to go into it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so... Um, did you see any kangaroos while you were out there? I did not see any kangaroos. ACDC? I didn't see ACDC. Mel Gibson? I didn't see Mel Gibson. Great Barrier Reef? No. I mean, why no. even go out there, man? Well, I had to go to work. Okay. All right, I can give you another word. Um, story that has to do with cats. Oh, my God. You got like 10 hours? No, just I mean, tell, uh, tell me a good story a, a about good cats. A good story about... Oh God, I, don't know, I don't even know if I have any good stories, but uh, I mean, we... Uh, I'll take any story. We rescue cats. I don't know. We Do have, you really? Yeah, well, we have four cats. I mean, they're all rescue cats. And... Um, are you, are you, are you anti-breeder? We, uh, not necessarily anti-breeder, but, uh, you know, I, I, I personally, I always say that the, the best animals are the ones that you find. I mean, for sure. I mean, I've, I've known people who have, you know... Uh, like certain breed and blah 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 and all that stuff and and typically the cat or dog, uh, th- those animals. Well, th- a lot of people like them for show do- show animals or whatever and and like to breed them and make money and all that stuff. But uh, a lot of them have have health issues or inbred a lot. They mm-hmm. they they die sooner, you know all that stuff. And um, and I mean anybody who has a has an animal is going to know where I'm coming from. And they you can just tell that ones that you rescue are appreciative. You know, they're more, they seem to be more loving and, and they, I really think that they know that, you know, you, you've rescued them. So we, uh, we have, we have four cats now and, um, we rescued all of them. The one we got recently is zombie. We got him from, he's the only one we didn't actually, f- am I still doing this? Yes. Oh my God. What? what? Okay. Uh, Do you hear oh, it? No. All right. There we go. How's that? Oh, all right. Jesus. All right. So Zombie. it's going to be huge, okay? Uh, do you not like dogs? Why? Do you don't want to rescue those? Oh God! Uh oh! No. Uh, I mean, why are only cats uh, I, being I, rescued? Uh, because well, because we always found cats when we lived in Parma. Uh, we we had let's see, how, I don't know how many we we moved when we moved there. Becky had already had a cat. Then we found a cat living under our deck. Then we found a cat in our garage. Then we found, um, then when we were visiting Becky's grandfather in, in Akron, we found a cat at a, uh, meow, Becky heard it meowing at a uh, garbage dumpster, yeah. and it was all messed up and mangled and everything. So we took that, that cat, uh, then, um, then, yeah, then another one came, literally came to our front door and was meowing. Well, I'm sure words are getting and around. It is. It is. There, there's, there's, at this uh, point in time. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a sign I don't think, somewhere. I don't think they're just showing up. Right. I think there's word in the street. Like, Amen. just go over there to the bald guy. So house. then, yeah. Well, at the time, it was long hair. Oh, the long hair guy. But then, uh, and then, and then 
Daphne came, which, well, it wasn't her name then, but, yeah. you know, not, and she had two kittens with her. And so then we adopted all of them. She's a single kitty. Yeah, she was a single kitty. Yeah. It's a, some deadbeat cat that wasn't, yeah. wasn't paying his dues. Yeah. And uh, so then so we then we got rid of the one cat to a, to a friend, and uh, we kept the mom and the, and the one baby. And so now we have Daphne and Snowy, which is the mom and the baby. And then we have uh, Freddie, who we found under my parents' deck. Who was a uh, ragdoll cat uh, slash uh, Maine Coon, and so really? he, yeah, so he was, but he was like only a pound when we found him. And he's like twenty two pounds now, yeah, and he's uh, he's really kind of effed up socially wise. It means like he bites and pees a lot, so he stays in one room downstairs, and uh, so he's just lucky to still be alive. Trust me, and uh, because you've wanted to kill him, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I just, you know, I'm not yeah. going to stand for piss all over yeah. in the house. You know, it's just, sorry, I love cats, but no. Um, and uh, and so now we have um, Becky and Josie were uh, volunteering at Kitten Crazy uh, Cat Shelter. And our one cat, Smokey, had passed away last year. So they brought home this other cat. Yeah. Uh, we named him Zombie. Because okay. they, they found him, he was. They said he looked like the cat from Pet Cemetery. He was like all messed up, and his Ew. his one eye is kind of messed up, and then his his tail is like half, and it's like kind of broken, twirls up or whatever. It's kind of cool, but yeah, um, but yeah, but no, he's totally normal now. So anyway, so we have four cats. So and uh, it's not that I don't like dogs. I like dogs, but dogs are a pain in the ass. Dogs take a lot, have a lot of you know, uh, uh, you know, you got to let them out all day long and all this shit. Uh, a little more cats, involved, uh, way more involved. I mean the. The uh, you know when we go on vacation, and if we only go for like three days, even four days, we don't even have to, you know, have anybody come and look at the cats or anything. You Those know? cats Whereas, just stay there for four straight days. Stay there in in the house. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean? Where are they going to go? A little irresponsible. Well, I leave the TV on. Oh, all right, fine. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Uh, let me think of my cat story. So, um, remember the girl that I was trying to impress. With okay. the running. Yeah. So we had broken up, and uh, I moved to Texas for a while. The stars and stripes are big and bright, <laughs> deep in the heart of Texas. This is what happens when you have a live show. <laughs> yeah, There's just no telling great. what's going to happen. So um, one, day, <laughs> one day I'm driving home from work, and in the middle of this two-lane road, there is this small kitten, literally, in the middle of the road, and it's just freaked out. And in Texas, apparently, they don't share your love of cats because they weren't even slowing down. Zero, 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 zero. And my heart thought, this will get her back. That was uh. my thought. Uh, this will get her back. And so I pulled my car to the side of the road, and I kind of stopped the traffic, and I go out to try to save this cat. And um, the cat was clearly like a wild cat. And it was afraid of humans. And so as I tried to go closer to it to pick it up, it starts hissing and, you know, all that. that, that How? Yeah. That, that, that cute stuff. It started going, yeah. God, I'll yeah. kill you. It was, it, yeah. it was a little crazy, and okay. I was a little afraid. Okay. So I thought, all right, I've got to save this cat. Why? Because I've got to get this girl back, and this will get her back. And I was convinced of it. And so I go back to the car. I'm trying to find, like, a piece of clothing or something that I can put on top of the cat, whatever. And... As I'm going towards the cat, it runs toward me. I scream, and it goes past me, and it's under my car. I'm like, okay, uh, all right. And so I'm looking around. I, I'm, I'm on the ground. I'm looking for this cat. I'm looking for this cat. I'm looking, come on, come on, little fella. Come on, little fella. And he won't come out. So I'm like, all right. And now the, now the people, they've, they've tolerated enough. We've got to drive. You know, we've got sure. stuff to do. Yeah. So they just start start going and pass me so i finally i just pull my car i'm like all right i don't want to pull too far because i don't know where this cat is exactly so i basically try to to let the wheel go like one revolution i don't want to go too far so it goes one revolution fine i thump, I, thump. I yeah no i yeah. didn't no thump thump so i get out of the car i walk around and that cat is halfway underneath that front wheel like it was laying on its back and its hands its paws were like reaching for the sky and it was dead, and I and and this was this this was my response. Son of a bitch, <laughs> you stupid cat! I because because I'm never gonna get her back now. Did you still give it to her? Oh no! Oh no! Right. 
No, no. She's only hearing that story right now. How do you know she, she's listening to you? She's not. Um, no. the other, or is she? No. How do you know? I don't know. But another thing that she did, and tell me, you guys can tell me if this is crazy or not. So we're driving, she and I, this is well before Texas, and um, there's a cat on the side of the road that had recently been killed, or recently been hit by a car, and it wasn't even dead yet. And so she and I stop, and she's trying to console this cat in some way, and she's trying to sit here and weigh the options of, are we going to take this to a vet or not? And so she's like, okay, well, um, uh, I'm going to go to the house you stay here with the cat, and then I'll come back. And I said, uh, okay. And she goes, now, if, something, if the cat dies, you've got to take care of it. You've got you to gotta bury it or whatever. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. This is on a bridge. We're on a bridge. Okay. All right? So I stand there, and I'm like my father. My father says, when an animal, when the doctor says, when the vet says to you, well, the, 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 the pet needs a new hip. It's going to cost $7,000. So, oh, no, no, it's fine. I got a bullet. We'll take care of it. That's, this, is, this is the home I was growing up in, all right? Okay. So to stand there and wait for this thing just to die, and then I'm going to go and get a shovel somewhere and find some piece of property to bury it. This is not going to happen. And so literally the cat's there, and I'm just thinking, dude, you just need to die. Just Because, listen, we both see the writing on the wall. This is not your day. So finally he dies. I just just going to shove him right off the side of the bridge. He falls into the river. Am I a bad person? Yeah. Okay. That's what she felt too, which is why well, I ended up moving to Texas. Right. Okay. Um, but I, I, you, I, what was I going to do? This was not my cat. You wouldn't have to try to impress these chicks so much if you just listen to normal music. George Michael has nothing to do oh, with me. All right. All right. So let's do another word. All right. What, 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 what? Do animals have souls? I don't think so. Okay, you're All you're right. evil. Go ahead. All no, right. I'm just kidding. Um, do you want to do any more of these? Or are you good? I'm whatever, man. I'm fine. Because you've not given me really a story yet, except a story. All right, furniture. All right, All right. furniture. You want a story about furniture? I thought we'd yeah. talk about these things, not necessarily uh, a huge story about it or anything. Yeah, what, I'm really hoping. Go ahead. Like... Oh, you have a story now? All of a sudden? Well, kind of. Okay, that was. Uh... Yeah, that was uh, uh, carpeting, but uh, nonetheless. Well, furniture sometimes sits on carpeting, so go ahead. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah, allow, it, I'll allow it. I guess, yeah. I mean, I, I kind of, uh, you know, there's, there's a difference. I think there's a difference between uh, like uh, just, just talking about a, a, a situation or uh, telling a, a full-fledged story. I mean, I don't know how many people have, you know, really cool stories about furniture. But uh, I unless have you, one. You know, unless you, well, yeah, of, course, of course you do. But You uh, want to hear it? I'll you, tell you first. Sure. Yeah. All right. Sure. Why not? Remember that store, uh, our house furniture. Uh huh. Very high end. Okay. Very nice. I I can't afford there. Yeah. But this girlfriend that I was with, not the same girlfriend, different yeah. girlfriend. She well, you were I, just a player, huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and did if, you know this? Dina? Anything? <laughs> anything? Did, you, did you know that he was such a player with all the girlfriends and everything? He wanted to be. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You wanted to be. Yeah. Anyway, this is, so, that's going to be a whole considering the source is talking about your old girlfriends. Okay. What do you think about I, that? I, I'm fine with that. Right. So we're at this, our house furniture. Maybe she, we'll get some as a, uh, as, I, as guests, as guests. Yeah. That would be, I'd be interested Wouldn't be in cool? that. Yeah, would be, oh be, man. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right. All right. So, um, Scott's getting mad. I keep interrupting him. Go ahead. So we go into our house furniture. Now here in Cleveland, uh, you, I don't know where our listeners are, but you ever have the radio, the, the news stations that have like the investigative reporters mm -hmm. all right well who is the investigative reporter in cleveland in our carl monday carl monday yeah all right i'm carl monday. so i'm telling you right now i'm in that store and literally when i see him my anxiety jumps about 30 points just to see him out in real life is like the most anxious thing because like oh it's on you know that something's about to go on. He's not even working right now. He's just trying to find the nice futon or whatever. Sure. But the moment I saw him in that furniture store, I was literally terrified that somehow he was going to somehow bust okay. me for something that I had done. See? That That's a story. story about furniture. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> what's your story about furniture? <laughs> Uh, well, my story about furniture is that carpeting sometimes sits on furniture. All right. Or vice versa. <laughs> And um, we went to Buddy's Carpet. All right. All right. And uh, we, we bought $2,000 worth of carpeting. Okay. All right. And uh, they had never, they never charged our card. 
and they like it was like two three weeks we didn't hear anything from them, nothing nothing finally went in and i got pissed and i'm like dude you we need our carpeting and you need to charge our card you know whatever we need to pay for this and blah 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 and they were real reluctant about it, you know, they just didn't, you know, something didn't seem right, you know, and, but they did, you know, they charged a car. I'm like, okay. And we're, we scheduled it and everything. Two days later on the news, guess what? Buddy's car was out of business. I'm like, you've got to be freaking kidding me. So they so tried to save you. They did try to save me. That's the thing that gets me. They tried to save you me, but I was such a dickhead. No, yes. I want you to take advantage Mother of Upper, me. You take me. Here it is. Take my money. I'm so dumb. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, so then, you know, we, we, I found out a lot about all, a lot of that stuff, you know, like th- what they did was illegal because they obviously knew that they were going out oh, of yes. business, you know, but, uh, so they, so they did it anyway, but a long story short is thank God. It, that's the moral of the story is always put it on a credit card because credit cards have those safeguards where you, you know, you, you, okay. you know, we got all our money back and everything, right. but it was, it was a, a tense, uh, day or two there you should have called uh, carl monday i should have he was too busy finding a futon maybe he was but all right Uh, i'm gonna give you um one more you ready yeah metro health hospital (laughs) metro health hospital (laughs) do you have a story about Uh, metro uh, see my idea of a story and your idea of a story, okay. I think, are two different stories. Oh, okay. Okay. And we need to come together and bring those stories, you know, together. When I say I could talk about things, I could talk about about hospitals or something. Metro Health Hospital, I have no idea. You, specifically Metro Health Hospital. You thought these were just going to be topics that we would just discuss. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, okay. No, that's not how this works. Oh, well, shit. Metro Health. Mike, Mike, do you have a Metro Health story? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> my wife might have a story about Metro Health Hospital. I don't know. Have you ever been in Metro Health Hospital? Oh, she was to she be was drug, drug tested. tested. Now that's boom, interesting. Boom, boom. For a job. Oh, for a job. Yeah. All right. But uh, like, like, see that I see Metro Health Hospital and I go, okay, hospitals. What well, about hospitals now? What you know? Do you have a story about a hospital? <laughs> no. <laughs> what the? Come on. My my, this is my thing. Is wait, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it on here. You Deanna, do. Deanna, does does he get that condescending look with you too? Sometimes, like where where he does the thing with the eyes and everything, and it's kind of like, hmm. yeah, you get the, you get that like like mm-hmm. oh oh you've been home all day and you didn't vacuum. Hmm. No, uh, uh, it happened once, once. No, what she's saying uh, is we don't vacuum. Right. No, right. Right, <laughs> right. Because we know. I mean, we know stay-at-home moms don't do anything anyway, so it doesn't matter. So, so anyway, hospitals. When I when I think of when I think of, like hospitals, you know, uh, you know, people always say, uh, like, you know, when I d- take my pictures of the, the abandoned places and everything, and you yeah. see one little one little orb, and they go, "Oh my God, it's a ghost! Look at that, it's a ghost!" And and I said, "No, it's an orb, mother effort. It's not a, you know, it's just a, it's just like a light shining, reflecting, whatever, blah blah." And um, you know, I always say with hospitals, people say, uh, "Keep my hands off the table." Uh, with hospitals, um, that's why I, I always say I don't believe in ghosts because you know, if if places were haunted, uh, the the most places that, that somebody dies in the whole world is going to be in a hospital. So hospitals would be the most haunted place in the world. And you never hear of necessarily of a haunted hospital really hmm. do. Now, do you? That's supernatural. Maybe, oh God, Jesus Christ, supernatural. Yeah. I don't know. But do you have, when is the last time you ever heard of a, of a haunted hospital rather, rather, rather than a haunted house or a haunted, uh, yeah, it's been a you while. know, whatever exactly then. And so all those people die there and they die. Well, under, there was that a lot of times that they, season of American horror story. There was, yeah, it's fictional TV. Yes, absolutely. What? Yeah, no, yeah. With the the one with Lady Gaga. Yeah. Oh, okay. With Stevie Nicks. Yeah, Stevie Nicks. Okay. Uh, well, you're blowing yeah. you're blowing my mind right now. I know, I know, I am. Mike, do you have a Metro Health has, Hospital uh, story? All right, let's go. Come on. Let's oh, go. yeah. All right, there ladies and gentlemen. There we go, Mike Alfano. Mike, I'm sorry, your last name again? Alfano. Alfano. All right, go ahead and put throw that on there. Micah Alfano is sitting down, real deal, considering the source. All right, so you you have a story about Metro Health. 
No, not a Metro Health. Okay, just hospital. Rainbow Babies. Ooh, okay. Um, that's going to be a long backstory. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. We've only gone two hours. Right. I mean, what's another hour? No, because I like to over-explain everything. Oh, good, good. <laughs> I have a... Uh, well, my dad is legally blind. He's got a rare eye disease. It's okay. called keratoconus. So he was part of a study. They were trying to track what caused the disease, and so it was genetic, so I had to go to the same eye doctor since we share the same genes. So I would go for my contact fitting and my eye exams at university. Okay. And... Uh, it was we had just so had he's our, completely blind legally blind he had cornea transplants so his vision with corrective lenses and the transplant is uh 2020 20. and has it been like this since you were born uh he actually got his first trans he's had four transplants uh he got the first two before i was born and then for some reason his body rejected the corneas in the, the mid 80s so he had the cornea transplants redone so when we say legally blind has he ever seen your face? Yeah, no, he's got twenty twenty vision. He had his cornea what? transplant. <laughs> without the transplant and without corrective lenses, he'd be legally blind. Oh, With okay. the cornea transplant and the con- corrective lenses, he's twenty twenty. All right. So, but uh, so this disease, they were so it's convenient. Yes. Gotcha. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he uh, he had to go for the study because the doctor there, uh, University Hospital, is a teaching hospital. Yeah. And uh, so this doctor was doing a study on this disease since we shared the genes i went to the same doctor all right so the one time i went for a contact fitting uh we had just had our first daughter so she wasn't able to drive me to the hospital i had to get my eyes dilated so i decided to take the rapid okay so you take the rapid and there's a shuttle that takes you from the rapid station to the hospital well i realized that i could just walk it was a short walk yeah that'd be a fine idea i was right through little italy so yeah wasn't a big deal. And again, your <laughs> eyes are or not yet dilated? Uh, on the way home, they are dilated. All right, but on the way there, you know where you're going. Yeah, I know where I'm going. Uh-huh. So, and you can I, see. Yeah, I can see. So uh-huh. I get my eyes dilated. I get done with the exam, and I'm walking out of the hospital, headed toward the rapid station. I'm on the phone with her, and maybe 500 feet ahead, I see two people fighting. Yeah. And as I'm getting closer, I realize that it's a man and a woman. And this guy is just shoving this girl down onto the ground. She's getting back up, shoves her down on the ground. I look around. There's nobody around. It's me and these two people. And well, I'm there like, could have been, but your eyes are dilated. <laughs> well, I could make out shapes. Okay. There was nobody around. Maybe they're just standing still. So I'm on with her. I'm like, just, you know, stand by. I'm like, I'm going to have to call the police. And uh, so, <laughs> so, and then I'm also going to have to break up this fight because I can't let this guy, you know, beat the crap out of his girlfriend in front of me. Yeah. So I'm I'm walking up. I'm talking to her. I hang up. Maybe I'm she like, did something though. Well, it gets better. <laughs> oh, so, I like it. So you know, I get up. He's pulling her by the hair, dragging her around on the ground. She gets up. They're scrapping around. You know, she he throws her down on the ground again. So I'm really, really getting right there to break him up. And she's like, "Fuck you! I'll kill this baby." Yeah, you're on your own. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I kept walking, called the police, and just kept going to the station. <laughs> so she's a real gem. Yeah. Right. <laughs> F you, yeah. I'll just kill this yeah, baby. Right, right this unborn belly. baby, yeah. I, I'll show you. Yeah, right. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh. There was a Hillary comment just then. I'm with her and the baby. Um, holy cow. Right. So uh, were these orbs that you saw, were they black or white? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We all know. We all know what they were. That's all being edited. Right now. <clears throat> All right, well, that's that's a pretty good story. That's a pretty good story. Uh, do you have any others about any of these other topics? I don't know what the topics are. Well, so. um, shoot, it has to be better than what <laughs> Jeff did. Uh, virgin virginity or fight, uh, gambling, virginity. running. Really yeah, I don't have a good story about virginity. It, uh, no, it, it lasted a long time and took me a long time to get rid of. <laughs> So the virginity lasts a long time. Yeah, okay. took me a long I thought you were saying like when you lost virginity, <laughs> no. that took a long time. Oh, no, like, that really? Very, that's surprising. That took a very short time. You're damn right it did. <laughs> um, I, I have a, guess I have another good fight story. Here we go. Oh, so somehow virginity <laughs> no, led no. right into a fight. All right, right. go ahead. I uh, play golf a lot. Oh, and uh, dude. <laughs> you guys are too peaceful. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so I, uh, I used to golf after work at uh, most of the time at Copper Top. In yep. Valley City. Yep. And uh, I went and played there one night after work, and it was 
in the summer and got done around 7 30 8 o'clock you know it was just a little bit of light left and i went in the clubhouse to watch the uh get the indian score okay and uh it's me and the cook are just sitting there talking about the game all of a sudden this little kid comes running in he's like chad chad where's chad i don't know if you know chad gibson he used to be the manager at copper top oh, okay. now he's at deer pass oh yeah i do know exactly what you're talking okay. about yeah so he uh he, kid comes in looking for chad and we're like chad's not here he's like there's a fight out on on t number 10 <laughs> <laughs> so it, again it's just me and the and the uh and the cook and the cook we go running out there following this little kid and uh there's two foursomes of guys just in a complete melee right in the middle of the right in the middle of the tee box really so me and the cook get everybody separated. this is so much better than jeff's <laughs> fight story <laughs> so go ahead so these two they're everybody's scrapping we have no idea who's fighting who and it's just a complete melee we pulling people apart we get two guys apart and two more guys start fighting are there golf clubs involved no golf clubs just oh, just okay. fists and and you know pushing and shoving and tackling and so we get everybody separated for about two seconds all of a sudden everybody starts fighting again and nobody knows who's fighting who anymore so we're getting ready to get punched you know i'm trying to like no no i'm not here to fight you know get everybody broken up again finally everybody gets separated and calms down all of a sudden this guy just Picks up one of the kids he's fighting with, slams him down on the ground. All melee breaks out again. A third time. A third time. So, <laughs> so finally we get everybody separated again, calm down. Then these guys, they, we're trying to figure out what happened. Then everybody starts arguing. You know, you're, everybody's yelling at each other. Nobody knows what's going on. So one of the, it ended up being a group of four older guys were using the tee box as a driving range because they were friends of the owners of the golf course. Well, these kids, look like they were in their early 20s, and uh, they – were playing for money they ended up tied after nine holes and they wanted to play they wanted to play a 10th hole so they go cut in front of the guys that are using the the hole as a driving range they start arguing so one of the older guys i don't know if he snapped or something he just decides he's going to go charging after one of the younger kids and start fighting with him again so he goes running at him head first with his hands down behind at his sides just yelling at the guy the kid just full cold cocks him right in the face you know as he's running at him boom splits the guy's lip like almost knocked his lip off of his mouth (laughs) he would have been lipless yeah he ended up it took like 30 some stitches to uh to reattach reattach his lip so he's laying on the practice green bleeding he's like you hit me and the guy like well no kidding you were charging at me so (laughs) so finally and then fight breaks out again a fourth time time finally get everybody separated then the cops finally get there so I don't know, I think I got home to like ten thirty that night after filling out reports and witness statements and Did the chef make you a meal or anything afterwards? No. That no meal. Should've, he should've, should've have should've punched him for that. that. Could have. Knocked his lip right off. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me to have Becky on here next time. All right. Let me hop in real quick, and I'll tell I'll tell the, the story, and then we're, and then we're gonna get Mike back. Fight story. He's, I he's got a great. He's, I got. A, I got a, hold on. Okay, here we go. We're back again. All right. We got a great fight story. Jeff Henson. All right. All right. Back, right. Real quick. Yeah. I. You know. Here's the thing. Mm. You know. And go. You know. It's just one of those things. Anyway. We're pumping gas at the one we're we're in Parma. This is uh, like when uh, we first moved out, like probably like ninety nine or so, and and we were pump. I was pumping gas at the at the one uh, at the corner. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, who, what does the does this is actual station matter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I'm at I'm at a corner here. That's why. Listen, listen, just listen to me, man. Okay. Holy crap! All right, just look, just. <laughs> oh my god! All right. So I'm at a corner. It's at a it's at a corner, and there, and then, and I'm and I'm pumping gas, and these I see these guys at going to turn left onto the, onto the the other street there, and and uh, there's this guy in back of them, and and they're they're yelling at each other, you know. Yeah. But between like one guy must have like, you know, whatever, uh, cut cut somebody off or whatever, sure. and so they. So they turned left in, into the other parking lot, and it was a blockbuster video po- parking lot. That's, that's how old. That's how old, that's how old is, this yeah. story is. And so the guys go. So they they go. The one guy goes in there, in into the parking lot, and and he like he's like motioning out his window for the for the guy to come 
into the parking lot. It's like, where's you know? the beef? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like one, one of these things. And uh, That's a reference and then, to the Wendy's restaurant. No, uh, Burger King. No, it was Wendy's. Oh, was it? Yeah. This is going south. Because you, you're sitting there talking about well, Wendy's. They, they right? need to know the reference. All right. All so right. The, the guy goes in there and he, and he motions this guy into there. And, and this guy's in this, in this big, uh, you know, making up for the size of a dick truck. You know? Oh, yes. Uh-huh. One of those. And so, you know, he, then he goes in there and I see these guys that they, they both get out of their car. And the one guy is like kind of like a, you know, bigger, like younger you know guy or whatever and the other guy is like an older guy he's out of god he's probably like 60 65 yeah. or whatever you know probably the same guy's playing golf that one day oh Go not that old but uh you know or young but uh so i i see it from across you know across across the way and all of a sudden this uh it was i was like kind of blocked so i could only see with like over the cars, you know, so I could only see like the the top part of their their torsos, you yes. know. Uh-huh. So the one guy and the younger guy like totally clocks the old guy, like right across the face, bam, yeah. and the guy just goes down. And and by that time we were already in a car, and I'm like telling Becky, I'm like, go over there, go over there, you know, and to so, where the fight is. Yeah, to where the fight is. Yeah, because nobody want her to go where the fight is. Yeah, she was driving the car. That's oh, why I, I was out pumping gas. She was driving the car. She always likes to drive a lot of times. So. uh so then we we finally got over. So you there. let her drive. Like and you'll you'll sit in the passenger seat while she drives. Yeah, this happens often. Yeah. Uh, well, who drove yeah. here tonight? Uh, drove here. I did. I drove here tonight. Huh. But yeah, that's interesting. Why? Why is that interesting? I don't know. I. I, I you, are you to too drive. manly to a little bit to, to let your little bit. let your wife drive? I like to drive and listen to George Michael and have her right there, you know, looking pretty. Sure. Well, right. yeah, right. usually I, I, you know, do you drive a Prius? Because I think that's the only thing that plays a George Michael. Uh, no. But uh, so, okay, all right. So you're back in your car. You're bossing your woman around like you right. should. And you exactly. Tell her, I'm drive like, bitch, there. drive. Get over there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so then, so then we get over there, and uh, uh, the guy's laying on the ground, and he was bleeding out of his, out of his mouth and everything. And the were guy, his uh, lips there. His lips were there. Right. They were still attached and everything. And um, so then. Uh, this guy was uh, in his car and in in his you know his big truck. I'll never forget this. His his license plate was Shockum, okay? <laughs> because I because he was in his in his car and it looked like he was trying to drive away, you know. And I remember uh, going over there and and telling him to, to to get out, and he wouldn't. This is the kid who just yeah the guy the or whatever just the, the dude's still laying on the on the yes, ground. Yes. This guy's in his truck ready to make his getaway. Right, Becky. Yeah, I, to, I told Becky. Yeah, I told Becky to go over there and like get. You know, attend to the guy. I'm going over here to, to see what was going on with this guy because I didn't want him to leave. Yeah. And then the uh, and then I, then I, I looked at his license plate. I go shock him. I got it like that. And and then I think he realized like he wasn't going to get away then. Yeah. So he just stayed. I remember. And uh, and then and then one of the uh, blockbuster girls came out and I said we need to call the cops. And you know that she came out with water for this guy and everything and all this stuff. And so we had fill out a police report and everything. And long story short, is this guy said that this guy the reason I, I told you that I could only see their torsos is this guy this younger guy said that uh, the older guy kicked him. Hmm. And so then that's why he he punched you know him in the punched face. him in the face. And so I don't know whatever came of that, but like it was like three days later, uh, this this older gentleman and his wife brought Becky flowers. Because well, I mean us flowers or whatever, but oh. he's like you know uh, you know, and so thank he got you. yeah, yeah as a, like a thank you, and then he uh, g- you know he said that the the he asked the cop for our address you know to to do something for us whatever yeah. you know that's how he got our address, but it was just interesting. Did he no. kick you? No, he did not kick oh. me. No, because no. if he did, that, that tells him maybe this guy has a, a pattern, right? Of right, kicking or kicking guys. or biting or something. Sure, hmm. yeah, right. But uh, no, yeah, so. This is interesting. Always get involved. That's what I always say. I mean, yeah. it's like, you know, yeah. Yeah. I, I do. I, hey, you know, unless uh, somebody says, you know, hey, uh, you know, I'm going to I'm going to kill this baby. Then, uh, you know, okay, what, then, you uh, walk away. then you just go, hey, right. you know, but not, how not often my thing. on a regular basis does Becky actually drive and you're in the passenger? How often does that happen? Yeah, a lot. Ninety nine percent of the time no, no, no. you drive. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I've got to tell you, I'm stunned when you. And your wife are going out. Who drives? Does she ever drive? Huh. Yeah. So it's just not me. No, it's not. No. Johnny, who drove over here tonight? Oh. oh! Well, it makes sense with him. Look at me. He's Mexican. <laughs> All right. He probably doesn't have any kind of legal documentation anyway. 
true. All right. I can either confirm or deny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, somebody saying something? You have one story? Well, come on down. Oh. All right. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Becky Henson, saint of Brunswick, as I like to call her, uh, because she lives with Jeff Henson on a regular oh. basis, yeah. doesn't laugh at his jokes, but she doesn't laugh in, in general. But she has a story for us. Becky, welcome to Considering the Source. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. So which, which of these topics I- is your story about? Well, it triggered... Virginity? No. No. Okay, it triggered a memory when you were talking about Carl Monday. Carl Monday, there we go. See, this is how the game really works. This, because all of a sudden these stories trigger other stories. I'm glad some, at least somebody in the Henson household understands. All right. Okay, so um, many of you will probably be familiar with a children's place called Amazon in yes. Medina. It's an awesome place. Kids love it. We used to take Josie there all the time. So in those who don't know, it's like there's a, it's an indoor, like um, they have laser tag in there. They have like a romper room, Chuck E. Cheese without the crazy looking uh, animals going around. Right. Right. All right. So as you're leaving, the attendant is supposed to check that you have your child. It would be helpful. <laughs> Yes. That In you theory, have. that's how it's supposed to go. Yes. Um, every time we were there, it never happened. They never checked so, if no. Josie was yours. No. You just walked out with her. And they Correct. Thought, go ahead. All right. So we were mentioning this to a friend of ours who worked for Channel 19. Uh-huh. So they decided to do an expose using us and Josie. So we went into Amazon. I had a purse that had a hidden camera. What? Yes. You've been hiding this story from me? <laughs> okay, okay, go ahead. So we... You, they, have, you have my undivided attention right now. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we went into Amazon. Jeff and I went in together with Josie. And we went, and I had the hidden camera, and they discussed how they gave you a ticket, and the number had to match her wristband when you left, and they would check it, yada, yada, yada. So as you're checking in, you're videotaping, and they're telling you, hey, by the way, when you leave, this is our procedure. Yes. And you're like, got it. Yeah. Now, did you say, like, speak into my purse? <laughs> Anything like that? <laughs> no. Okay. All right. So <laughs> what we did was beforehand, we did explain to Josie, because she was maybe only three, you're going to leave with someone else, so it's okay. <laughs> so what they did was they had their other cameraman come in yeah. and hold her hand and videotaped her leaving with him, and they never checked. You are kidding me. Yeah. So then they did this whole thing where um, they came and interviewed us. How did we feel about this whole thing? And they did a whole new story on it. The, and this was like how so this must this must be like uh 12 years ago no it well, was about ma- eight or nine years ago nine yeah years ago. yeah are you and so you had long hair at the time jeff yes hmm. yeah. now did it strike you as odd that channel light teen was more interested in that than the fact that you drive him around <laughs> <laughs> because that's the story that i'm really interested in <laughs> Okay, in his defense, yeah. I get extremely car sick, so I like to drive, so I don't get car sick. Oh, okay. Although he is a terrible driver, too. What, is, what, what does he do as a <laughs> No, ter- he's really, well, yeah, go he ahead. makes me car sick. <laughs> is, is, is a little bit of a, a jerky no, type of a drive? It, it, yeah, it's speed up, slow down, speed up, slow oh, down. Oh, yeah, we hate those. Yeah. Mm. Has he had any car accidents? Um, not for years and years. Speeding tickets? Not for years and Reckless? Years. No, Reckless never. operation? No. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Are you flicking me off? He's, I think he's flipping no. me off. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, do you have any other stories about any of these other topics here? Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes. <laughs> Hold on. Hey, let me get in this. Here. Uh, one last thing here. Before this Amazon thing. Yeah. The funny, the, this, is the, this is the best part about it is, is that they came over... And and interviewed Becky for it, you know. Afterwards, you know, and the weird, the, I, I still to this day I don't understand why they did this, or whatever. But they said they go, uh, we interviewed because we we watched this thing for ourselves the first time on TV, you know. And they're like, we interviewed the father about what happened, and I'm like, well, that's weird because they didn't interview me, you know. I'm like, what the hell? And 
So then you see Becky in her living room. She's all blacked out. And it's like, I'm scared for my life. That's exactly what it was like. And I'm like, why would they do that? Why didn't they just say the mother? But they, they said the father, and then they, they totally blacked her out. You couldn't see who she was or the, or the voice. Like, she was so scared that the Amazon terrorists were going to come and take our daughter because, you know, we made this expose about them. But then, and then they showed this other part where, where they went in uh, off hours and they confronted them about it and the lady was all like i don't want to talk to you blah blah, blah. and yeah and, and it was yeah she was real standoffish and didn't want to you know talk we follow the procedures and that's all i can say and and yeah. the very next time we went they did not check us uh, still <laughs> never they still don't yeah no. No, no. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and you asked about any more topics. I do yeah. have a PSA about cats. All right. Let's, let's hear it. I can't wait. <laughs> if you're ever trying to rescue a cat. And this you, would have been helpful back. And you need a carrier. A pillowcase makes the best carrier. That would have been helpful back down there in Texas. See? Now everyone He knows. was just like this. like. If you're ever rescuing... If you're ever rescuing a cat, a pillowcase makes a wonderful carrier because they can still breathe through the fabric and you can just hold it closed at the top. I did rescue a cat like that before. Is that what you take? Now, do you guys rescue those? Like, like, Are you going to a specific facility to rescue or you you rescue them when you find them like at somebody's house or something? Well, we used, Yeah, whenever we would see them somewhere, we would just bring them home. It never makes you think like this is somebody else's cat that is just going on a walk. You can usually tell when they're abandoned or outdoor because they're usually in bad shape hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. but now we volunteer kitten crazy and they're absolutely wonderful kitten crazy in medina i presume a lot of older women work there <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> all right let me tell you let me tell you another great cat story and this is this is a true story and for you cat lovers you're not gonna like this story you're not gonna like this story at all You know you're within punching distance. Oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) All right, well, here's the story. So I, in high school, I had a teacher. Um, Her, it doesn't, I can't, I don't want to give her name. But this woman was an art teacher and she was that cat lady. And she had lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of cats. And she also had a husband, we'll call him Harvey. And so uh, she went away one weekend. She was going to go away to some type of art conference. And so while she was away, these cats had all lived in the house with her and Harvey for all these years. And so he was a very much a handyman. And so um, what happened is while she was gone, first thing he did was he went out and he built outdoor um, cat houses. He built maybe 10 of them. So these cats could then live in those. And then he went into the house and he cleaned up all of the cat mess and all the hair and all the pee and all that that had been there for years. And he cleaned all of that up. And then she came home and she saw these 10 or so cat houses and she immediately said, no, 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 no. And she grabbed them and she brought them right back into the house. The next day, She went to work. When she came home, Harvey had taken all those cats and put them in the garage, and he just turned the car on, and they died. (laughs) And when she came home, there were 10 piles of dead cats outside of their house. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to Considering the Source. (laughs) This is the most awkward I've ever felt in my life. This story. So, so the reason the story makes me laugh <laughs> is not because I want these cats to die. It's I disliked her, and the fact that she could be so insensitive to her husband that, like, she just listen. The work that you did doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead, and we're going to live in filth. And bring these cats right back in the house. The man literally snapped. He shortly thereafter they were divorced and it was on. But when I when I heard about the ten piles, <laughs> I know, right? Hey, I laugh. Any Holocaust jokes? I laugh. I laugh when I'm nervous or sad. 
uh, <clears throat> who did show that? I think it was an, an, an aunt of mine who had known her that she told me that story. Yeah. So, uh, but again, I, I grew up, listen, I don't, I don't view animals like, like I'm attached to this dog of ours, Mag. I'm attached to her, but, um, I grew up with my dad and my, my dad was animals were a means to an end either for eating or it was a tool. Uh, it, it is a, it is a bird dog. It's, it's a bird hunting do oh, dog. That's what it does. Or it's a dog that's going to be outside just to, to bark. My parents, my parents bought this quiche hound. Anyone here ever heard of that breed, a quiche hound? It's, it looks very much like a chow. It, it, it has a big mane on it. It's, it's, a, it's a gray and a, and a black dog. This dog was kept outside. It was all mangy, and it's, it was never taken to a, a, a place where it was washed or groomed because my dad, that's not what a dog was. A dog was just, it was always to be outside. And so when I, I think I grew up with that hard look towards animals, and that's why when I hear the story, that I just laugh and laugh and laugh. Have you ever had a cat? I have had cats, yes. Um, when I was young, we're, um, my mom says to my sister and I, we're living in Washington, D.C., living in Washington, D.C., and um, it's winter. I'm probably seven years old, and mom says, do you want to go get a, a, go get some, get a treat from 7-Eleven? Yeah. So we climb into the car. And she starts the car up, and we hear, <clears throat> we hear the cat screech. The cat had crawled up into, now into the engine to get warm, and it, it, almost, it had almost torn its, its, its leg off. So I can't stop laughing. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so, no. So <laughs> we go out, and we get the cat. And now this is like on a Sunday night, all right? We can't find a vet. We're, we have this cat now, this bloody cat in a box with a towel, and we're just trying to drive around, just trying to find someplace. My dad, meanwhile, is at work. So my mom finally finds a vet. At this time, today's dollar, it probably cost 10 grand. She paid to have this cat's leg basically reattached, and they put a pin in it. It was like a bionic cat now. And so, yeah, when my dad came home, I thought he was going to murder somebody when she said basically $10,000 that we just spent to save this cat. Because my dad's like, that just doesn't, and especially cats. My dad is, is hating a cat because my dad says, I've paid this much for you. When I say come here, come here. And the cat says, I, I, no, I'm good. My dad can't deal with that. Becky's got a great cat story. My first cat had bladder stones. Yeah, put it down. So <laughs> we begged and begged and begged and begged. And finally, I think it was more because of Jeff's harping with my parents, making them feel bad. So my mom worked at American Greetings. And what they do is they go to the APL and get kittens and puppies, take them over to American Greetings. Everyone plays with them all day long, wears them out. Then they take their pictures. So that day, my mom... Um, adopted the one kitten and brought it home for me. That was all worn out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, so she was on a card and a calendar. Hmm. And um, so she was less than a year old and she started peeing. And I have chronic issues with kidney stones and urinary infections. And she climbed up into the sink and peed and it was full of blood. So I called the vet, and they're like, oh, it's probably just a urinary infection, and we'll give her antibiotics. So yeah. I went and got the antibiotics, gave it to her, and she's still peeing. I'm like, I get urinary infections all the time. There is nowhere near this blood. Something's mm -hmm. wrong. So I took her back in, and they found out she had stones. So it cost um, about $1,000, and I was probably 15 at the time. So I paid $50 a week to the vet until I paid it off. You are kidding me. I made $80 a week and 50 went to the vet. Tell me this cat is still alive. Well, no, that, I mean, that was years ago. Did the she, cat come to you when you called it? Oh, yeah. She was All actually right. very smart. I tell her, I lived in a colonial two-story. I'm like, it's bedtime. And she'd run up the stairs and go down the hallway to my bed. And uh, she knew a lot of words, what treat was and... Treat? Mm hmm. Hmm. She, she was actually very smart for a cat. What was her name? Missy. Hmm. She used to pick on our German Shepherd. She would beat him up. He was scared of her. 
Did the did this the the bladder thing? Did the stones did that pass that, that got all worked yeah, out? Yeah, she or? was on medicine for a little while, but then she grew out of it, so she was fine. Thousand bucks mm-hmm. gone. But I probably wouldn't. Jeff and I are in the same thing. Like if we came across, like you said, the cat that had the torn, we would just put it down. Uh huh. We, we love our animals and love them to death. Sure. But there comes to a point where I gotta eat. Yeah. And I want to go on you vacation this year. You got to be realistic. So we went and Mr. go Bigglesworth overboard. Can, Mr. Bigglesworth. vacation all the time. I don't want to hear it. I don't go on vacation. Doesn't, well, doesn't eat the animals. He's always on vacation. All right. Jeff Henson doesn't know what he's talking about. All right, everybody. Well, listen, this has been really good. We are now at uh, two hours and 14 minutes. I've taken enough of these good people's time. Uh, thank you to, to, to all of my guests tonight. This was a real treat. And the great thing is this. Considering the Source is back now after a year. Now, the, the really important thing is to do our next one. But let me tell you right now what the next one's going to be. I'm just going to go ahead and whet your appetite. Uh, a man I worked with is a former former security analyst. Okay? So one of the things that he was doing was at one point in time listening to your phone calls. And I'm going to talk to him in our next episode about that, everything he heard and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and I'm going to ask him. He was listening to American people's phone calls. And we're going to talk to him about when he drives. Does he drive or does his wife drive? So those are the questions we're going to ask on the next one. So, uh, uh, Becky, do us a favor. At the, at, I'm considering the source when we end our show. We always end it with our, with our, 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 our line, which is everyone has a story. Can you give me that one time? Everyone has a story. Everyone has a story. He doesn't like me to do that. Hold on. That was pretty good. He doesn't like me to do it all dramatic like that. I used to do it all the like. Everyone has a story. Oh, everyone has a story. Everyone has a story. I do all that stuff. I think I she did it pretty good. Boobs don't come through on, on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Jeff just said boobs don't come through on the uh, on the sound. And that right. is Jeff's addiction, by the way. That's his addiction. Is it a disease? His addiction to breasts, that's his disease. Now that one he'll buy. All right, Becky, give it to me one more time without Jeff's interruption. Any way you want, because the last one was really pretty good. One more time. Everyone has a story. Perfect. Oh, sure, when I do. <laughs> well, there you have it. That was, it was a really fun night. And, uh, and, and so if you're following us on Facebook, uh, don't, don't, please don't hesitate to do that. Uh, that is a spot where we will definitely notify you when we are going to do another live, uh, live episode of Considering the Source here, here at, a, at our home. Now, uh, I do want to go ahead and, uh, and expand a little bit more on our upcoming guest. Uh, it's a friend of mine. I'm, I'm not at liberty to give his name uh, because he was working actually for the NSA. He was a security uh, or a security analyst, and um, he's going to come on our show uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks to tell a little bit of his story. And let me just tell you right now, it's amazing. And I, I know this guy. I've known him for a couple of years. And the fact that he just basically kind of opened up and told me this a couple of weeks ago was stunning. I sat there in our office with my jaw just dropped to the floor at some of the things he told me. So uh, please keep your eye out for, for a new episode of Considering the Source with, uh, with my buddy. So uh, thanks again for listening. And uh, I guess I, I want to say one more thing. If you can, uh, be sure and download as many of these episodes as you can. Tell your family and friends about it. And uh, don't, don't, don't hesitate to reach out to us uh, through our website or, or through our Facebook. We, we'd love to hear from you. So thanks for taking the time out of your day to listen to this. Hope you've enjoyed it. And remember, everyone has a story.